four straight road games. They're trying to make it five today. And I'm telling you, they call it the Valley of the Sun with good reason. 100 degrees on the field right now, and believe it or not, yesterday and Friday were actually hotter here in the Phoenix Tempe area than it was and than it is today. Luis Zendejas, who played here in college at Arizona State, hometown boy, playing for the opposition, will be kicking it off and back deep to receive by Sikahima, 36, and Tony Baker, number 44, as Zendejas kicks it off for Philadelphia. Baker will take it five yards deep and not bring it out. So Tom Tupa will make his first NFL start. He took about half of the snaps in practice this week, and it's the first week all year he's had work with the first team. Luis Sharp, Zandowski a rookie, Kennard, Big Lance Smith, Wolf a rookie, and Rob Awalt the tight end. Earl Farrell and Tony Jordan, the running backs. J.T. Smith, the NFL's leading receiver. Ernie Jones. And then by Sikahima, who does everything. And Jay Novacek, who's sort of in between a tight end and a wide receiver, will be the extra receivers for Phoenix, first and 10, from their own 20. Earl Farrell in motion. Two for the pass. Incomplete. No flag. Eric Allen all over the back of the attended receiver, but timing it perfectly. Some of the Phoenix fans disagree, but it'll be second and ten. You know, Steve, I talked to uh, Neil Lomax on the field before the game and asked about uh, Tom Tupa. He was very enthusiastic about Tom. He said he has good movement, uh, is a very bright guy, has got a good arm, and all he needs is experience, but he thinks he's going to be an excellent quarterback. And again, I don't think the Cardinals have any kind of a chance to win this game unless they throw the ball extremely well. Well, they obviously feel the same way as they tried to pass on first down. And Tupac going to the shotgun on second and ten. Three wide receivers, four wide receivers in the game. It should be a first down. It is a 12-yard gain to Ernie Jones. Izell Jenkins made the stop. First and ten Cardinals. Well, you know the... Here's Reggie White, the great one. And Pitts, Brown, and Simmons, this may be the best front four in the NFL right now. They've certainly been playing like it. Joyner, Evans, and Harris, very active. And the secondary for Philadelphia, Jenkins, Allen, Hopkins, and Waters, with Frizzell and Everett coming off the bench. And all the different alignments is very, very difficult, very difficult for teams to run on the Philadelphia Eagles. And again, as I mentioned earlier, you've got to throw the ball efficiently. And the big thing is you've got to be able to pick up the blitzes and pass blocks so you can throw the ball. Buddy Ryan, along with Gene Stallings, they are each in their fourth year with their respective teams. Gene Stallings in the final year of his current contract. Tony Baker game two. Well, maybe he gained nothing. Second down. Complete to J.T. Smith. Wes Hopkins hit him right away. But it's short of the first down as Hopkins is out, or rather Smith is out, of about the 37. Top of our screen here, we'll see the shot to the receiver. Tupa, you know, has shown really on the first couple of plays, even though it's a pretty good rush, he's shown some good poise. And he throws on the inside to, to Smith, number 84, who just sees the opening in the zone defense and settles in that area, and he gets the ball to him right at the numbers. They mark it at the 38. Third down and four. In and out of the hands of the intended receiver, Jay Novacek. So it'll be fourth and four, and the punting unit is on for Phoenix. You know, really, that time, Steve, the back who was in motion in the flat was wide open. He made up his mind, I think, prematurely that he was going to try to throw the ball to Novacek, and uh, he was covered. The guy in the flat was wide open on the play. Rich Camarillo, averaging near 43 yards a punt, and Henry Gizmo Williams back for Philadelphia, takes it at the 21. Run out of bounds at about the 25. A 42-yard punt and a five-yard return. Randall Cunningham and company will go on offense when we return. 
stopped the move. It, they did pick up one first down, and now it's the Eagles on offense, starting at their own 26. And they're going to run the ball a lot this afternoon, I would think. They want to keep the ball away from the Cardinals as much as they possibly can, and I wouldn't be surprised if they just didn't, they don't start with some kind of a big run right up the middle. 2,000 yards rushing. He's on his way to leading the Eagles in rushing as a quarterback for the third year in a row. Higgs. And Mark Higgs, who's starting in place of the injured Keith Byers, picks up a few before Ken Harvey, the linebacker, brings him down. Up front, Darwin, Shad, Alexander, Solt, who's rounding into form after his suspension. Heller the the, er, in there. And Jimmy Giles, the tight end, starting in place of Keith Jackson, who's out with the back spasms. Then it's two-tone. Anthony Tony Higgs starting in place of Byers. Quick and Carter, the wideouts. With Williams and Garrity in there on third down and or long yardage. On second down, Anthony Tony. Not much running room inside. He's out to about the 32. And it'll bring up third down. For the injured Cardinals, Sadler, Had, Waller, and Galloway are the front four. Bell, Hill, and Harvey, the linebackers. Matt Carter, Zordich, and McDonald in the secondary with Michael Downs and Jay Taylor off the bench. Gene Stallings, who says we cannot use the injuries as an excuse. We must play regardless. And they have played well, consider. Cunningham gets away from the pressure. Incomplete. A flag is thrown. The pass intended for Chris Carter and Cedric Mack had the coverage. And Mack may be flagged for interference. Yeah, it looked like he might have hit him while the ball was still in the air, Steve. And it, we'll look at the replay here. Or maybe we'll get a good good shot at it. But it looked like he might have hit him while the ball was in the air. Outside. Well, that had to be the case because there was contact there on the outside. And they called pass interference on the play on Cedric Mack, number 47. Referee Jerry Seaman. Holding number 47 defense. First down. So it's really defensive holding rather than pass interference. I'm not too sure that Carter would have been able to get to it. And you can see that the Phoenix Cardinals are up there among the leaders as far as the most penalties committed are concerned. First and 10 now at the 37 of Philadelphia. Higgs cutting it back nicely and running hard to the 44. Ron Mark H Higgs out of Kentucky, only his second year. Ron Heller, number 73, the right tackle, pulled on the play and got a good block on the outside. They pulled the guard and they pulled the tackle. The faking to the fullback inside and giving it to the halfback outside. We'll get a sh shot at there's Heller, number 73, in the middle of the picture, getting a good push. And the back breaks inside and picks up some yardage on the play. But again, the key, Ron Hiller, number 73, the right tackle. And it was a game of seven, second and three. Incomplete. <laughs> Intended for Jimmy Giles over the middle. And a good play by Eric Hill, a rookie out of LSU, to strip the ball away. Don McPherson, the quarterback out of Syracuse for Philadelphia, and wide receiver Ron Johnson are the inactives for the Eagles. And for Phoenix, it's Michael Adams out of the secondary, and Roy Green, who broke his clavicle last week against Washington, who is still on the roster, has not been put on IR, but the Cardinals, you don't have any room left on the injured reserve. Cunningham, completing it to Higgs, but he won't get the first down as Anthony Bell drives him out of bounds. At the 44, at the line of scrimmage. And the Eagles will have to give it up. It looks like the receiver could have gotten a little deeper on the pattern had he known exactly and specifically where he had to go to make the necessary yardage for the first down. John Telchik will do the putting and by Sikahima. He had a 53-yarder this year already. Back to receive it, takes it at about the 2018. Good move. Dragged down from behind as he gets near the 35. Good play by Britt Hager. There, Sikahima may have gone a long way. It's the 16-yard punt return, nevertheless, after a 38-yard punt. The cap on is Roy Green, who broke his 
clavicle last week. And I talked to him on the field before the game, and he was very enthusiastic about the fact that he thinks he'll be back in three or four weeks. Now, whether that's realistic or not, I don't know. The doctors seem to think it'll take longer than that, but he swears that he'll be back in three or four weeks, and he's very anxious to get back. Well, that's one reason that he was not put on injured reserve. Only one reason is that the Cardinals are hopeful that he will be back before he would have been otherwise. First and ten from the 34. Tom Tupa firing incomplete. It was intended for Rob Allwalt, the tie Awalt, the tight end, and Izell Jenkins was right there with him. Cardinals really, I mean, decimated. You can use all the cliches, all the phrases, but just look at this is only a partial list of the guys who have been out and the guys, really key guys, who are hurt or out for one reason or another. Freddie Joe Nunn, of course, is out because of the suspension. And uh, the list just goes on. Well, the nice to talk to Gene Stallings. He's, you know, very feels badly about what's happened, but he's realistic enough, enough to know that he can't do anything about that. He's got to play with what he has and do everything he possibly can to win a football game. And he's told his players that they cannot get down because of the injuries. They just have to play that much harder. Tupa has a lot of time, but nobody open. And he's down at the 32. Clyde Simmons, who's having a great season. Clyde Simmons, according to Reggie White, probably the most underrated player in the defensive line in football right now. Now, here's a great play by Tom Tupa. See, here's a youngster playing quarterback for the first time at the National Football League as a starter. Now, it's very easy. He's back in the pocket. He's looking. He's looking. He jumps out of the pocket, and he looks like he might run, but he doesn't. No place to throw the ball. A lot of young quarterbacks would have thrown the ball up for grabs and not possibly would have been an interception. He knew he had no place to go, so he just ate the ball and took the loss and would line up for another play. And it was Clyde Simmons who eventually brought him down. Now from the shotgun on third and 11. Overthrows J.T. Smith. So Tupa now two of six passing for only 18 yards. As it'll bring up fourth and 11, the Cardinals at their own 33. That was just a th badly thrown ball. He threw it way over the top, and he might have felt that maybe there was no way he could make the, make the play work because of the coverage, and, de uh, and definitely threw the ball over the top purposely. So Rich Camarillo is on for another punt, and Henry Williams is back. Gizmo around his own 20, backpedals to about the 15. Trying to get to the outside, and he almost makes it. A lot of running for a few yards, but that's how exciting Gizmo can be. A 15-yard punt return, 9.26 to go in the first. Still no score. At Tempe, and you can see that this stadium, which holds in excess of 70,000, is about a little more than half full. Here on the west side, there are more people. When they renewed season tickets, 90% of the people on the west side, where there is some shade here, renewed. About a third of the people on the east side, where they bake in the sun, did not renew. Philadelphia on first down. Mark Higgs gets a block. And gets across the 35 to about the 38. Anthony Bell and Ken Harvey on the stop. And there's a little help for the boys on the sideline. Henry, that, that may not be enough today. You know, the St. Louis, or the, I started to say it, the Phoenix Cardinals, uh, the trainer makes the, everybody on the football team drink a quart and a half of water before they take the field to make sure they're not dehydrated. The other thing that Phoenix always does, as the officials have asked for a timeout here, is they always insist on wearing the white mesh jerseys at home. You can see 55 Anthony Bell, he is limping off the field. And he's being replaced by Randy Kirk, number 53 at or 52 at linebacker. So apparently Anthony Bell in his fourth year out of Michigan State coming up lame and asking to leave the game. A lot of other NFL action is completed and we'll keep you up to date. On second down, Anthony Tony to about the 41, and that's all. You know, one thing that you have to do against uh, the Cardinals, you have to run right at them as quick as you possibly can because they respond and react and pursue so well. So that's why they're running straight ahead. And I think as the game goes along, they get them worried about the inside. They'll try to bounce outside and make some runs outside. 
one of the things that might be a key Hank is to get defenses pursuing a lot in this heat trying to wear them down as an offense tries to maintain possession of the ball on third down Tony banging ahead he had a lead block from Robert Drummond and he is appears to have enough for the first down he does the nice thing about it was that time uh, Steve everybody was in there very tight expecting something inside and he popped it outside the tackle a big big hole and he picked up a lot of yardage for the first down got it out to the 47 he's had some big days Eagles on a reverse Chris Carter gonna throw the pass no he fakes it and he's dragged out of bounds as he crosses the midfield stripe into Phoenix territory good block by Ron Solt who got some extra yardage for him we'll see a replay of this here's Carter now lined up on the left side and he'll take the reverse now they they were really trying to throw a reverse pass because they've used this play and they did it with the express purpose of getting the defensive backs to come up but they didn't he faked the pass and ran to the outside and got as much out of the play as he possibly could and watch what happens here he's got a room he's got somebody out in front but the defensive backs we don't see him downfield react real well and didn't get a chance to throw the ball Cunningham on first down incomplete it was as, as it was intended for Mike Quick who is you know and I talked to Mike yesterday I said you know you haven't caught a lot of balls he said no oh, I know I haven't they're double covering me a lot but that's not important the only things important is that my time will come I'll eventually catch a lot of balls and the only thing that really matters really right now is the fact that we must win as long as we're winning I have no complaints they talked about perhaps putting him in the slot more Ted Plum the offensive coordinator in an effort to get him the ball and that's where he is now intercepted picked off by Carl Carter Carter inside the 15 bumped out of bounds by Cunningham and did you see that tackle by Cunningham he just didn't push him he hit him with his shoulder pads a good good hit by Cunningham and I'm sure he hit him that hard because he was upset about the fact he threw the interception and the Eagles are arguing that Carter was down by contact and should not have been allowed to get up and run but he ran it back 53 yards here we see it Garrity going to the inside the ball is thrown way inside and I think they're reviewing it even as we speak yeah I think they, they have to review that one but I, I really think that there was contact on the play and they got to bring that back from the spot where the contract where, where he fell I disagree with you Hank I, there's Dave Kamansky the replay official and Don Anderson the communicator if I were making the call I would say Garrity was going for the ball and the contact that may have occurred was in the course of them both going to the ball but I'm we wrong. have the intercepting team down by contact the ball would be put in play back there first down you're right coach I disagree but they're bringing it back yeah that's the only way you can really call that play I you know he's they, he's got as much of a chance to make the interception as the offensive player but the ball was way out of front of the receiver and I don't think he really had much of a chance to make the catch unless he had uh, arms like Will Chamberlain he might have made that play but see he dives for the ball my point is he's diving for the ball he's not really knocked down by contact he goes down and catching the ball and that's why the official originally ruled it was okay for him to get up and run but it's been overruled by the replay official and by of course coach Hank Scram. Good thing you're not officiating the game coach and you're up here with me. <laughs> well nonetheless it becomes Phoenix ball at their own 33 first and 10. Earl Farrell going in motion and a pitch back to Tony Jordan and Jordan gets across the 35 but a penalty flag is thrown at the line of scrimmage. So Jerry Seaman will sort it out and it appears to be offsides against Philadelphia.
So since the gain was less than five. Offside, number 99 defense, still first down. So Brown, the offender, and it's first and five, now at the 38. Carry and he's tripped up as he crosses the line of scrimmage. Andre Waters, a strong safety with good penetration, got him behind the line. You know what they're doing too, Steve? They're bringing the tight end, putting him in the backfield and sending him in motion. And the reason they're doing that because they don't decide where the strength of the formation is until they find out where the tight end is. I'm talking about the Eagles. So they line up in one defense. When the, when the motion starts, they have to switch to another defense. And they're trying to create a moment of decision on the part of the Eagles. Farrell again with very short yardage. You may have gotten to the 45 before he was pushed back. Al Harris leading the charge. Wes Hopkins, who is just like a, a linebacker, number 48. He's one of the great safeties, weak safeties in the National Football League. But watch him come up here and make the hit. Comes in there a little late, but he's right near the line of scrimmage. And when he's up there that tight, we can look for play action passes behind him because he's very aggressive and very eager to make the tackle to close to the line of scrimmage. First and ten. Jordan gets about three to the 48. Ron Wolfley in there at fullback making a good block on the corner. One thing about the Eagle defense, they play in their tight on their 46 defense, which has been very dominant and prominent all over the National Football League. It's hard to run inside. The place to run against that defense is to the split inside to the weak side, or if you can get the end close enough, then you can try to run outside and try to hook him. That's what they tried to do in that last play. Time called by the officials just as the Cardinals come up to the line. They respot the ball by about a foot. Second down and seven. Just inside the Cardinals 48, and they get a fresh 30. There again, Rob Abel, the tight end, coming out of the backfield and in motion to a tight end position. Earl Farrell gets about four across midfield to the Philadelphia 48. Reggie White, number 92, and Wes Hopkins, 48 on the stop. You know, the thing that impresses you about this Cardinal team is the fact that they really come after you. They play hard. They've got a great attitude watching them practice. They don't have their daubers down about what their season has been, been like. They're very realistic about the injuries, but they all feel that, you know, we can't do anything about what we can't control. That's ancient history. And we've got to just do the best we possibly can and somehow, some way, try to find a way to win this game. One of the things that Gene Stallings works hard to instill his character and it has shown in the way the Cardinals have played amid the bit, all the injuries and problems they've had. Third down, long two. Hoopa under pressure. Going to be stacked to the 41-yard line. Jerome Brown, one of the first there, Eric Everett, up from the secondary as well, and Clyde Simmons in the vicinity. We'll see Jerome Brown now, the defensive right tackle, number 99, coming to the inside, takes an inside rush, goes to the outside, he gets a piece of the quarterback, and it winds up being a sack for Jerome Brown, number 99. So it's fourth and 14, Tupa getting his debut, and Henry Williams back to look at a rich Camarillo punt once again. At the 10. And out to about the 17 or 18. Randy Kirk on the stop. A 48-yard punt by Camarillo. And a six-yard return by Gizmo. Randall Cunningham will go back to work in just a minute. I'm back with you at Sun Devil Stadium here. No score in the first quarter. 
between the Phoenix Cardinals and the Philadelphia Eagles. And so far, Henry, we've seen pretty much exactly what we thought we'd see. The Cardinals being conservative because of the young quarterback, and the Eagles said they wanted to run the ball. They're trying to do that. Well, I think it's good that the Eagles are trying to run the football, but they better forget about that. They've got to pump the ball up a little bit and get up on top and get back to what they do best. And if they have to, go to the pass and then come back to the run. But they're not doing much good with the running game the way it is right now. Neither team has been able to generate much offense. No score with 322 left to go in the first. First and 10, Anthony Tony, And he's dragged down. Maybe a gain of a yard is all. Ron S Rod Sadler, number 72 in his third year out of Texas A&M, called him down. And again, as we talked about it earlier, it's difficult to run sideways against the Cardinals because they're not overly large, but they're very quick and very fast, and they respond to the ball extremely well. Second down and nine. Cunningham wants to throw. And he completes it to Garrity. Garrity out to the 45 for a Philadelphia first down. In the grasp of 55, Anthony Bell. You know, that's their personality, Steve, and it's hard to change a personality. They make things happen when they're throwing the ball, when they're moving around back there with Cunningham with the great escapability skill that he has. But look at here. He sets up like he's going to throw the ball from the pocket. That's a design play, and then he goes to the outside. Look at the blocking on the inside from the in outside in. He's got all the time in the world rolling out. Finds Garrity inside. He makes the catch, which is obvious, and, of course, picks up a big gain in the play. But that's what they have to do more of. And of 26, Higgs banging forward. And he moves into Phoenix territory, down near the 47. David Galloway, who's been playing with both thighs bruised and a injured an injured right thumb, made the tackle on Higgs, who again is starting in place of Keith Byers, who was unable to go because of a continuing back spasm problem. Galloway, really a terrific player, but he's been hurt so much, he never gets a chance to stay in one position very long. Pushing the pile, he's getting a little help from his friends. Heller, Solt, and others trying to get him over the first down marker, which was the 45, and it looks like they may have accomplished it. They got a good push that time. He took uh, Highway 65, Ron Solt, and also Highway 73, Ron Heller. Got a good push. Eric Hill, the middle linebacker, rookie out of LSU. And they like him. He's going to be terrific. First and 10 Philadelphia from the 44 Phoenix. Tony trying to cut it back. It's a couple to the 42 is all. Tim McDonald, the strong safety, makes the tackle. You know, they were in a slot left that time with a split in on the right side. And uh, they had a perfect situation on the slot side to their left with two on two. Everybody was really ganging up inside. That would have been a perfect time to get the ball outside and and try to make some kind of a big play. It is second down and eight, the sixth play of this drive as Philadelphia has driven the ball from inside their own 15 now to the 42. Lots of time for Cunningham going deep for Jimmy Giles incomplete. Just off his fingertips as McDonald had the coverage on Giles who's starting in place of Keith Jackson. You talk about how close and the difference in speed. Giles really is a is a very good tight end. He really is. Great hands. It was out just a little bit out in front too much, and he just couldn't grab the end of the ball to make the catch. So it is third down and eight. Still at the 42 of Phoenix. turnover and Jay Taylor tipped the ball that Downs intercepted. Number one, we start. Look at the pass protection. He's got all the time in the world to throw the ball. Look at this. He's back in the pocket. He steps up, throws, follow through, throws the ball deep downfield. The ball's deflected. You see in the air. 
And here we see the interception. And he goes right down the sideline. And the Card Cardinals have it first and 10. Check this out. The Cardinals are not used to this. They've gotten two turnovers today. They are a minus 13 next to last in the NFL. Jordan running hard and getting inside the Philadelphia 45. Reggie White on the tackle. And that's the end of the first quarter. No score here in Tempe, Arizona. Cacti to the bound. And there has, while there's been a plethora of cacti, Henry, there's been a dearth of scoring. No score here early in the second quarter. You can talk about the scoring drives in the first part. <laughs> <laughs> As we start the second quarter, there were no scoring drives in the first quarter. For your responsibility. <laughs> Phoenix has it second down and three. And a huge hole. Earl Farrell gets the first down and then some as he gets to the 36 before Clyde Simmons, 96, brings him down. Farrell at 250 pounds and only six feet tall is a load to the ground load. He's carried four times for 18 yards now. You talk about a rolling manhole cover, that's what he is. He's, He's tough a, to tackle. He's a big Charlie Toller. in the outside would be a good time to get up on top. Jordan can't get outside. He gets a maybe a yard to the 35 before he's driven back. Al Harris, 95. You know, one thing uh, about the Eagles, I think any time that you see them in a bump and run or a one-for-one -one coverage, I think maybe you have about 10 opportunities to make big plays in a game like this, and I think when you see that, you have to go up on top and try to make something happen and try to get a big play. You might not catch the ball, but you might have pass interference or something, but you still have to try to get up on top and make that big play. Extra DBs now in for Philadelphia on second down and eight. That snap, but Tupa handled it. Overthrown and intercepted. Izell Jenkins picks it off at about the two-yard line, and Philadelphia will turn Phoenix away again. He tried to he tried to throw the ball in the seam, which is an area right inside the numbers. The pass protection is good, but if it made up his mind, he's going to throw the ball in the seam, and Jenkins on the outside got a great jump on the ball. I think any time that you throw the ball deep downfield like that, you, you know, the defensive back has a chance to recover about 20 yards. He got a good jump and made the interception. A great play by Jenkins in the left corner, number 46. Buddy Ryan calls him Crazy Cat. I guess after the cartoon character of the same name. Now the fans want some work from their Phoenix defense as Philadelphia tries to bang it out of there. No gain and maybe a loss of a half a yard. Tony had nowhere to run except right into Tim McDonald and David Galloway. Now one thing about the, the Cardinals, they use a 4-3 defense so they don't change very much. Two people on the guards, two people on the ends, and look at the middle linebacker fill. Look at the way they fill the hole. But they say, here, we're going to line up. We're not going to do anything fancy. You lick us. You knock us off the line of scrimmage. Oh, thank you. The first points of the game scored on a safety as Carl Wilson drags down Tony in the end zone. There it is from the end zone now, going outside, and Carl Wilson comes through there and makes the tackle deep in the, right in the middle of the end zone. It's a safety. But here again, and that part of the field, we talked about it earlier, is very difficult to run outside against the Cardinals, and especially in that particular situation with bad field position, you have to give a lot of credit to the Cardinals, the way they played it, and of course, Carl Wilson, number 90, who made the tackle. Just outstanding penetration by the third-year defensive end from LSU. 12.54 to go in the second quarter, and it is 2 to nothing. Phoenix leading Philadelphia. I guess 
Hank, in a game where defense is dominated, it would be appropriate that the first points would be scored by the defense. Well, the Cardinals, you know, if they're going to win this game, the turnover factor is going to be very, very important, and they must play on a shorter field than the opposition. You know, if you run a 100-yard race and one guy has to run 100 yards and you just run 40, I don't care if you're Jesse Owens, you're not going to win that race. And so that's what they have to do, and they got a good break that time, and they get two points on the board, and they're still going to wind up with the ball after the safety. One of the things that Buddy Ryan and the Eagles were most concerned about, and you just brought it up, Henry, the 4-3 defense that Phoenix plays about 90% of the time. It's so different from the norm to play that 4-3 almost exclusively that they were concerned about going against it, running against it in particular. Well, you know, the 4-3 is a basic defense of the National Football League for 50 years, really. But everybody has kind of gotten away from it with different alignments, as you know, Steve, overshifts, undershifts. They used to do an awful lot of that, but they don't do nearly as much of it anymore. They just line up and say they're going to stunt some, but they line up and say, listen, this is where we are. You lick us. We're not going to beat ourselves. So John Telchik will have a free kick from the 20, and as happens in most cases, you know, the Eagles elect to punt. You know, Telchik, talking to him yesterday, said they didn't kick one kick all week long in practice because of that bad knee. So his hunting so far has been acceptable in this game by Sikahima. This is not a good kick, however. Sikahima trying to get out from behind a wall. Can't do it. Ty Allard brings him down. But good field position for the Cardinals at their own 47, first and 10. Let's go back and take a look at the safety. Carl Wilson coming almost, I guess, untouched. He was back there about the same time the ball got to Tony. Well, look how wide he is. Look how wide he is. The right of your screen. And the back went right by him. He was supposed to block him on the play because he was so wide. He didn't go for him. He went for the linebacker instead. Left Wilson wide open, and he made the sack. He made the tackle. Tom Tufet, quarterback. As Earl Farrell comes in motion. Jordan. just refused to be blocked. Earl Farrell's job was to block 95 Al Harris, and Harris would have none of it. You know, they call that a stretch play. That's a play that uh, Cincinnati ran so well last year. You run off toward the end, toward the end, and then go off of his block and try to get outside. Uh, as you mentioned, why the defensive linebacker on that play really did a great job of containing it and making the tackle. Harris was going to turn it in no matter what. The ball at the 48. Gain of one. Second down and nine. Yes, it's two to nothing. Cardinal. Ball in motion. Complete. And what an acrobatic catch by Ernie Jones. A 26-yard gain. Andre Waters, the strong safety, was with him, but Ernie Jones, who Hogaboom said has all the tools to be great. The key here, watch now. He goes to the outside and moves the pocket a little bit, buys a little time, has plenty of time to throw the ball, and drops it right in the middle of the air, in the middle of the field there, to Jones, who makes the fine catch, and they got great field position. But again, the key was the movement to the outside to get away from the inside pressure. Ernie Jones with a big career at Indiana on his second year. Take on first down, two for the throw. And he picks up good yardage before getting out of bounds. Down around the 18. Earl Farrell with a good block for him. And there again, great judgment on the part of Tom Tupa. You know, he fakes inside, play action fake with the idea that you're going to throw the ball outside, but nobody was there. He decided to take off and run. And again, a lot of young quarterbacks would have thrown the ball up on top, possibly, and had an interception. But he has still possession of the ball and a good field position. Cooper credits Neil Lomax, who, of course, is out with his arthritic hip problem for helping him a great deal, even though he has not been the main man in practice. drags him down, but it looks like Farrell has the first down inside the 15. 
And the Cardinals are really doing a good job of moving the ball, Hank. This really, though, has not been their problem. Their offense has done a pretty good job. Yeah, they have. They really have. The problem has been, really, the big problem has been a turnover. Herschel Walker with a big day in his debut in Minnesota, leading the Vikings to a victory. Detroit finally won again. at the 14. Jordan. Philadelphia waiting for him as three green shirts are there. Seth Joyner and Jerome Brown make the tackle. And it's going to be a loss of about three, so it'll be second and 13. Atlanta losing on their last second field goal. That game was tied late with the 49ers with another one of their patented late game surges. Yeah, I haven't seen them play yet, but everybody what? says they're, they're a terrific team. They can do it in the fourth quarter. Tupa has it knocked away. Oh. Jerome Brown holds on. Brown rumbling out across the 40 before he's dragged down. Byron Evans tipped the ball out of Tupa's hands. And Jerome Brown got it and brought it back 16 more yards. A defensive lineman's dream, Hank. Does he love it? He'll want, he'll want some low cuts for the next game <laughs> after that interception. <laughs> Looking now, Tupa back in the pocket. It rolls to his left. Whoop! Goes back to the outside. Can't go there. He's hit on the inside. And watch Brown. He bobbles the ball, but he follows the bouncing ball and goes down the sideline. And finally, <laughs> after it rumbles about 15 yards, <laughs> gets the ball for the Eagles. He carried it like Walter Payton, but he can't run like Walter. In a game dominated by defense, turnovers have been a big part of the story as each team is driven into the other's territory only to be turned away. Tom Tupa, his first NFL start in place of the injured Gary Hogeboom out with the bad elbow. And the only points of the game scored on a safety as Phoenix leads two to nothing. It is first and ten at the 43 of Philadelphia. Cunningham looking long. Intercepted. Picked off by Cedric Mack. Intended for Mike Quick. The turnover story continues. Three now. Picked off by the Cardinals. You know, the one thing that you can't do, you can't be impatient and make up your mind you're going to throw the ball someplace. Look at this. He decided he's going to throw the ball deep downfield. It was underthrown. The ball's underthrown. And as a result, Cedric Mack was able to come up with the interception. The ball was intended for Mike Quick. Mike was trying to jar the ball loose, I think, but he didn't know exactly where it was by the time he found out where it was. School was out. Cedric Mack's first interception of the year, and this is one of the things, Hank, that Randall Cunningham told us yesterday he was concerned about. Well, that was just a bad throw on the part of Cunningham, and he doesn't do that very often, especially the long ball. He gets it out there in pretty good shape. So the Cardinals have it first and 10 at their own 15. Tupa going long and incomplete. Intended for Jones, who had Eric Allen beaten, and I'm not too sure Allen didn't get a fingertip on that ball. He might have got a piece of it, but again, you know, I'm really impressed with Tupa. He doesn't look like he's bothered at all uh, with the responsibility of starting this football game. He's shown a lot of poise. Yep. Yep, he did. He got a piece of it. The timing of the jump was perfect. Good job by Eric Allen in his second year, and he is one of three Eagles who played college ball right here in this stadium at Arizona State University. So it's second down and 10. Phoenix still at their own 15. Super with a quick pass. Jay Novacek not brought down, but certainly stopped. Andre Waters and Byron Evans out there. You know, that's an interesting play. They could call a run in the huddle and on the line of scrimmage if the quarterback sees there's any room on the outside, regardless of the fact that it's supposed to be a run, he'll just take the ball and throw it to the outside like he did that time to Novacek, but the defensive back was right there, uh, Jenkins, and made the tackle. Gene Stallings 
who has the nickname among the players now of Mr. Goodwin. Because every time he turns around, he has to fix another part of his team. Third down. Jones again and Eric Allen ran him out of bounds. Ernie Jones with a couple of big catches so far in the game. And the, now Jones is the outside receiver and that's a timing pattern on the outside on the right side of your screen as you look at it. Now look at the big cushion he's got on Allen and Allen is turning to the inside when the ball is thrown. As a result the outside is very vulnerable. And uh, as a result, he makes that catch and picks up enough yardage for the first down. Three, are close. three for 58. The ball now at the 37 of Phoenix, first and 10. Farrell, big hole. Good tackle in the secondary by Wes Hopkins, where Farrell would have had a lot more. Wes Hop Hopkins, as I mentioned earlier, played his collegiate football at SMU, but he's like a linebacker playing safety. He's a hitter. He really dings you, and he uses those shoulder pads. And a good read by Farrell. Play is designed to go up the middle. He bounces to the outside, but still his shoulder squared ahead. And uh, Hopkins, 48, really makes a great hit. It was a gain of nine. Second down and one. Again, banging straight ahead is Earl Farrell for the first down. And into Eagle territory at about the 47. Clyde Simmons got him around the ankle. So another St. Louis. Or, see, I did it too, man. It's easy to do. Another you see Phoenix those first down. One of the things Gene Stallings said he wanted to do was to pick up good yardage on first down. That's a key in every game, but with the Cardinals wanting to control the football, doubly important. Jordan carried across the 45 for a short game. You know, you don't see many teams run the old handoff, straight ahead shot, nothing fancy, straight ahead blocking at the point of attack. But what happens is that the ends are playing so wide that they just don't block them at all. They get a good push inside, and the back is picking his way, making good yardage. And that's not bad first down yardage. Gain of four, second down and six. If you gain four on every play, you get a first down every third time. This is the seventh play of this drive. And Eagle 44. A delay to Farrell. Breaks one tackle, but finally dragged down. Mike Golick made the initial hit, and Farrell almost ran out of his grasp. Problem with the play that time, they were pulling their left guard and also the left tackle, Louis Sharp, 67. Didn't get out in front of the ball carrier. He got lost in the crowd there, and as a result, there was a, a blocker short, which he was supposed to be, and as a result, they didn't make the yardage on the play. Now on third down and four, the nickel package offensively for the Cardinals comes in by Sikahima, number 36, and Don Holmes, number 83, an extra wide receiver, and three of them are split out wide to the left. Four wide receivers in the game for Phoenix, and six DBs in the game for Philadelphia. Get him in motion. And Trip is going to run it. He has the first down as he slides down at the 37. Covered by Izell Jenkins. And again, excellent judgment by a second-year player, Tom Tupa. A lot of poise on the part of Tupa. You know, I'll tell you the other thing. I'm surprised that he moves as well as he does. I didn't think he could run like he does, but he's a, he does a great job. Now, look at, look at, he's looking to his left, and then he sees a big hole up the middle very decisively, makes the decision, takes off and runs, knows exactly where the marker is for the first down, slides into the sideline and makes the necessary yardage for the first down. A really an excellent judgment play on the part of Tom Tupa. Reggie White appears to be injured for Philadelphia with 5.15 to go in the second quarter. The Phoenix Cardinals lead the Philadelphia Eagles 2 to nothing. On a sky in the Valley of the Sun, Steve Zabriskie and Hank Stram with you in Tempe, where Phoenix leads Philadelphia two to nothing here in the second quarter. Reggie White injured on the play, helped from the field and on the bench. Yeah, and you know, talking to Reggie yesterday, he 
We talked about how he was playing, and he said he really regrets that he missed training camp and much of training camp because he wasn't as sharp as he should be or would have been had he been in camp. But he had a contract problem, so he stayed out. He said if he had it to do over again, as much as he hates training camp and what player doesn't, he realizes his technique was really hurt by not being in camp. Now he's been physically hurt, which probably had nothing to do with not being in camp. But he doesn't appear to be seriously injured. It appears to be a back bruise or injury of some kind. Meanwhile, Farrell carried for five, so it's second down and five. The ball at the 31 of Philadelphia. Phoenix now in the tenth play of this drive. Big pitch, Farrell up the middle, fumble. Hopkins trying to hold on. He dropped it, but it does appear as if Philadelphia's come up with it. And that's what's been killing the Cardinals, those turnovers, and there's a great opportunity to make some points. In a ground-level shot here, we see the recovery of the fumble. Andre Waters recovered the fumble. It looked like Farrell had some room, too. Hopkins, West was trying desperately to make the, the interception, so to speak, in the air. The ball popped out of there. And watch West now come in here trying to intercept the ball in the air. He misses it. And Andre Waters finally comes up with the interception or with the recovery fumble, number 20. Farrell ordinarily is not much of a fumbler. He maintains good possession of the ball most of the time. Turnovers are even at three as Cunningham throws. Higgs hammered as he gets near the 25. Ken Harvey in his second year out of the University of California. You talk about a guy who's strong. Ken Harvey had a summer job in college at a lumber yard. The foreman he worked for asked him to move a couple of hundred pounds of two by fours from one place to another. Ken didn't know he meant use the forklift. He went over, picked him up in his arms, and carried him across the lumber yard. That's strong. Yeah. Second down. Fumble. Phoenix has it. Heath Sherman fumbled the football, and it looked like Ken Harvey fell on it. Might have been Jim Waller. That's a counter trap play with a guard and the, uh, the tackle pulling to his left. The ball pops out of there. I don't. It didn't look like he was even hit that time. Talking about about Sherman. Sherman. And it pops out of there, and the Cardinals have possession again, first and ten. It's been, really been a very sloppy game so far with the turnovers, and especially Philadelphia looks very sloppy. They do not look like themselves, that's for sure. Now flags fly as they can't get the play off. Jerry Seaman stopping play. The illegal motion against the Cardinals. So to go with the turnovers, some penalties as well. False start prior to the snap. Number 62 offense, still first down. That's Mike Zandoski, the rookie left guard out of the University of Washington. 3-31 to go in the second yeah. quarter. You know, the schoolhouse part of this game is so important, as you know, Steve, and it looks like, you know, if you're a good football team, you beat a great football team like Philadelphia did last week, you come in the next week and you can't have a letdown. It looks like they're just exactly what they're doing here. They're not playing with the same enthusiasm that they normally play with. Reggie White, number 92, back in the game. Suffered muscle cramps in his back. Tupa under pressure. Has it knocked away and did it happen again? No. Clyde Simmons almost comes up with an interception, and again it was Byron Evans who chased Tupa and knocked the ball loose, as was the case when Jerome Brown picked one off. And the problem that time, Steve, was Tony Jordan. Tony Jordan, number 32, was supposed to block the defensive end here. Watch him, and he doesn't block him. Watch Jordan now. Look at there he is, the fake. See, he's supposed to block the linebacker coming to the outside, didn't, and as a result, he gets him. Joiner gets him from the backside. But it was strictly the responsibility or lack of execution on the part of Tony Jordan, number 32. Before it was Evans and Jerome Brown, and now Joiner and Simmons trying to combine on the same play. How do you work on that play in practice? 
You look at those films a lot, don't you? <laughs> and imagine a lot of things. The penalty on the play moves the ball back to the 42 of Philadelphia. Jerome Browns was ruled a fumble recovery and not an interception. But one of seven turnovers in the game. So it's first and 25, Phoenix. Sekahima on the draw. Takes the inside handoff and gets about to the 39. Seth Joyner, who had the flu last night after the Eagles got here. Joyner came down with a case of the flu, but he is in there nonetheless. He didn't look like he was bothered by the flu the way he chased Tupa on that last play. And then again, that time they pulled that left guard and left tackle trying to get through the hole, and they got a pretty good seam. But didn't make enough yardage on the play. Game four. Second down. So, yard or two to go. With a time, completing it again to Ernie Jones. Ernie Jones has been his favorite receiver in this game, and it's a gain of 14. Jenkins, Jenkins is playing the corner on the left side. Watch the receiver come down in the hole between, between the safety and also the corner. Stops right in between both of them, and he gets the ball right on the money. And again, the key, no pass rush at all that time. They none at all. Cooper may not get this play off, and he will not, before the two-minute warning, now referred to as the two-minute notification. So that two minutes two to minute go warning. in the first half, and it's still Phoenix 2, Philadelphia nothing. Philadelphia's Andrew Tony in the end zone for a safety that has been the only scoring in the game. Two minutes remaining in the first half. Each team with three timeouts remaining. And Hank has been defense, defense, and turnover. And that's really the story for each team. Third down and six at the 23. From the shotgun. Fires it under pressure and fires it into the ground between Ernie Jones and Don Holmes. Eric Everett was blitzing him. I tell you one thing, Buddy Ryan's going to melt the wax in their ears at halftime. <laughs> <laughs> You'd love to be a fly on the wall, wouldn't you, oh, hear that yeah. speech? He'll do some pounding on that table at halftime, I guarantee you. This team uh, looks like they need some no-do. Looks like the they already playing. got some. <laughs> looks like they may have had too many. All right, a 41-yard field goal attempt. Al Del Greco, who is five of six on the year. Make that six of seven. And it is now five to nothing Phoenix with 153 left to go in the first half. With a 41-yard field goal, his longest of the year so far. He is six of seven. It's five to nothing to Phoenix. And he will now kick off with 153 remaining in the first half. And I asked Del Greco behind the field before the game about what he felt before he kicked field goals. He said, I just worry about keeping my shoulders square. And if I keep them square, I'm going to hit the ball straight. He'll be kicking to either Heath Sherman 23 or Henry Williams number 81. Looks like it'll be Gizmo at the three. Out to the 30, and a good return by Henry Williams, who's averaging almost 19 yards of return on kickoff. Well, next Saturday, a college football doubleheader for you here on CBS. Four national powers coming your way. Game one, two undefeated SEC teams. Alabama will be hosting Tennessee. And then in game two, freshman quarterback Todd Marinovich leads the USC Trojans into South Bend for one of the biggest of all time. It'll be USC at Notre Dame. That'll be at 3.30 right here on CBS. An injured Phoenix Cardinal on the field. Stopping the clock with 1.47 to go in the half. So while he's attended to, we'll take a timeout. 
with Phoenix leading five to nothing. But that's going to be when the game's over, I guess. You know, a lot of actually it should have said halftime report. It's only halftime. You know, the unusual thing uh, at this time of the season, Steve, you know, a lot of crazy things happen. And you have to realize, and they usually happen because you know, people don't realize that they've only played five games, but actually they played four preseason games. So really, this is equivalent almost to a college season. And if you're not careful why uh, the fatigue factor uh, kind of slips into your team and you got to be careful that you don't work them too hard at this stage of the season because they really actually played a full season, which is equivalent to college football. Well, it's Randy Kirk who's injured in his third year out of San Diego State who was down and so well covered that we were unable to identify him right away and they're going to have to take him off on the cart. Look along the bottom part of the screen here number 52 right here. He gets the block and he's trying he's getting trying to get off the block. He's getting pushed into the ball carrier and he gets knocked over. And, his, and it looks like his right leg was stretched out and maybe the cleats got caught in the turf in the grass and maybe that was the problem. Looks like one of his own players was blocked on top of it. So Randy Kirk with a leg injury of some kind serious enough to require that he be taken off on a motorized cart. So another Cardinal goes down and I'll tell you, Gene Stallings has to be wondering what in the world's going on. And Hank, you know, you talk about off-season conditioning. It's not the muscle pull kind of thing. They've been, for the most part, joint-related type of injuries and broken bones. Well, I think as long as, you know, they have to they have to investigate the possibility of players working too long for such an extensive period of time, uh, all season long, and then when the season starts, there's a lot of injuries. It's complete to Robert Drummond. He's hit right away by Tim McDonald, but a good gain up to the 35. Drummond in the game, the rookie out of Syracuse. And now another wide receiver into the game. Four wideouts for Philadelphia on second and five from the 35. Cunningham out of the pocket and dragged down. Can Harvey with another big play for the Cardinals as he gets Cunningham at about the 37. Cunningham was just looks like he was going to put it in overdrive, but by the time he did, why uh, Harvey came back from the backside and look at the speed he has. He overtook Cunningham in a big hurry. Cunningham looking now for he sees the gap right up the front and look at behind. Harvey catches him from the backside and makes the tackle. And a good tackle by Harvey, number 56. So Philadelphia calls timeout. They now have two remaining here in the half, stopping the clock with a minute 11 left to go in the second quarter. Phoenix is leading five to nothing, a safety and a 41-yard Del Greco field goal that has been the extent of the scoring. And we want to remind you that there'll be plenty more action next week here on CBS. It all starts at 12.30 Eastern. You'll see either Tampa Bay at Washington, Minnesota at Detroit, Dallas at Kansas City, Green Bay will be at Miami, or others of you will see New Orleans at the Rams, the Giants will be in San Diego, and Atlanta is right here in Phoenix on the four o'clock games and it all starts with the NFL today beginning at 1230 Eastern Time Irv, Dick, Brent and Will bringing you all the latest info that's next Sunday here on CBS third down and three after the gain of seven Cunningham will go from the shotgun again as soon as they allow him 1-11 to go in the half A floater incomplete. Chris Carter went up as high as he could, but he could not bring it down. And David Galloway, 65, put the pressure on Cunningham. The time they had three on two on the slot people on both sides, which is six on four. The middle area was wide open, but he couldn't throw the ball there because he got flushed out of the pocket. I tell you, this, this, this uh, Eagle team looks like they're, they're very nonchalant. They're just not into the flow of the game. 
and that's a surprise because watching them practice yesterday, they had a lot of enthusiasm, a lot of pep, uh, the attitude was great. It seems like they're playing just the opposite of what they looked like yesterday. They do look flat by Sikahima. Back to return John Telchik's punt. Telchik drives it, and Sikahima goes back about the 11 and just gets away. Finally hauled down at about the 20. Another good return by Bai Sikahima. 52 yard punt by Telchik and a nine yard return. David Little, the backup tight end, made the tackle for the Eagles. So 54 seconds remaining in the half. Phoenix leading five to nothing. We'll have it first and ten at their own 20. I would expect, Henry, they will not take any chances here. No, they can't afford to. They can't afford to. They fought very hard to get those five points. They can't afford to make a mistake here and uh, provide the, the Eagles with an opportunity to get the ball and get some points on the board before halftime. Farrell spinning and getting a couple out to about the 22. Jerome Brown with the big bear hug along with Harris. I think the Eagles must have had pancakes for breakfast where they're flat. <laughs> <laughs> Pancakes with no yeast. Yeah. Well, B Buddy Ryan calls another timeout. They now have one remaining this half. 43 seconds remaining. Buddy, well, already give him a verbal massage at halftime. I'll guarantee you that. <laughs> uh, he can talk, I'll tell you. You know, it was interesting, though, talking about the things that they were concerned about. One of the things that never came up, we talked to Ted Plum, the offensive coordinator. We talked to uh, the defensive coordinator. Buddy hasn't talked about it all week. The possibility of a letdown after the big win over the Giants. They never even discussed it. Well, I talked to Buddy on the field about that. I brought it up to him, and he, I said, Buddy, you know, if you're the kind of a team you're supposed to be, well, you shouldn't have any kind of a letdown here this afternoon. That was illustrated last week. We did the Rams game against Atlanta, and uh, the Rams came off of a big win with the 49ers, but they came right off the bus and played a beautiful game and won the game very impressively. Your team has to play that way today. He says we will. Well, it had not so far. That's the 30-second clock on the left. Tupa will let it run down a ways, I'm sure. The game clock starts on the snap. Jordan pounding ahead, and Jordan may have a first down as he punches it out. And now, a little extracurricular activity. Derek Kennard and, Rhett and Jerome Brown going at it. And this is definitely a heavyweight bout. Derek Kennard, 310 pounds. Jerome Brown at about an even 300. So Derek's got him by 10 or 15. Maybe. <laughs> but anyway, there is more. There is a penalty flag, at least one thrown on the play. See on the right hand side of the screen. Here. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness, face mask, number 99 defense. First down. And the call is against Jerome Brown for grabbing the face mask of Derek Kennard. That's why Kennard was upset. And the penalty will go against Brown and the Eagles, moving the ball out to the 45. And Brown, as big as he is, he wouldn't have to face, uh, grab your face mask. Just grab your period and shake it, and it'd be enough. That'd be a problem in itself, wouldn't it? Well, you got a guy 310 blocking you, though. You may need some help. Four wideouts now. Cardinals with some room. So Tupin goes to the shotgun. J.T. Smith in motion. Fires it into the ground. It was intended for Smith, or maybe not. Stopping the clock with exactly 30 seconds remaining in the game. Looks like he got hit from the side and didn't feel the pressure that time, and he got hit right about the time he threw the ball. Tupin's completed 6 of 14. For 83 yards and one interception, not a high completion ratio, but as you mentioned, Hank, you've got to be impressed with the poise he's demonstrated so far. Yeah, he's really done a good job from that standpoint. I, I and again, I'm surprised. The big surprise to me is the way he moves. Again, the spread formation to draw to stick of Hema, but he will go nowhere. Reggie White hauls him down as he gets back to the 45 as a whole loss on the play. Clyde Simmons helping out. The clock running now with about 15 seconds remaining in the first half. Phoenix will try it again. Tupa firing and completing it. And again, it's to Ernie Jones, but Ernie can't get out of bounds. And so the clock will continue to run. And now 
now they stop it with three seconds left. You know, you talk about Buddy Ryan being such a gruff personality, and his exterior persona is certainly that. But he and Gene Stallings are pretty close, and there was a story here about the other side of Buddy Ryan, and that Buddy knows that Gene Stallings has a horse ranch in his home of Paris, Texas, and as a gift, Buddy, who loves horses, gave a thoroughbred two-year-old to Gene Stallings' daughters, which they now keep at the Paris, Texas ranch. Yeah, you might add that the, the horse had a bad leg. <laughs> That's right, he had tendonitis or something. In his... <laughs> but it was still a nice gesture. Yeah, yeah, are you saying Buddy wouldn't have given him to him if he hadn't had a bad no, leg? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm sure he would have. They're great friends. And he talked about that on the field before the game. I asked him specifically about that point. Well, Buddy has his persona, and it's vastly different from that of the almost always stoic Gene Stallings. But they are very close. They are, however, today on opposite sides of the field. So again, four wideouts of the game, three of them to the near side, three seconds left in the first half. Hooper throwing it about as far as he can. Into the end zone, intercepted. And it's going to be run out by Andre Waters just to see what happens as time has expired on the clock. Waters looking for help. A penalty flag is thrown as Waters has dropped at about the 15. So the game, the first half, rather, cannot end on a defensive penalty anyway. So we'll see what the penalty is and see if, in fact, holding. So Number 33 intercepting team on the run back. The half is over. Yep. So they were on offense once the turnover took place. That's the end of the first half with the score. Phoenix 5 and Philadelphia nothing. In control. They have twice as much yardage as do the Philadelphia Eagles. The time of possession heavily in favor. More than nine minutes in favor of Phoenix over Philadelphia. So the Cardinals are outplaying the Eagles, Henry, and therefore lead five to nothing. Well, I tell you, you know, they're just one play out of being in this game. For I'm talking about the Eagles, just one play, but they have to do a better job of mixing up their offense, especially on first and ten. I think they've had the ball nine times on first and ten, and only threw the ball once on first and ten. So Del Greco will kick it off, and Heath Sherman takes it at the eight-yard line. Runs into his own man, runs into another of his own guys, and gets it out to about the 27. Elia Jaroschuk makes the tackle. Jaroschuk in his third year out of New Hampshire. And here's Randall Cunningham back to work, looking for a much better second half than he had in the first. And talking to him yesterday and talking to the coaches, they felt very good about the fact that, uh, you know, they were in good shape as far as their team is concerned, and they thought they would play very well. They have first and ten at their own 28. Byers in the game. Pete Byers back in, not starting and not playing at all in the first half with an injured back. And now he gets in a fight and a flag goes down after the play. And it's a personal foul against the Cardinal. So Byers, who got a helmet in the back last week, did not practice all week, did not play the first half. And here's the call from Personal Seaman. foul, unnecessary roughness, number 56 defense, first down. That's Ken Harvey. And we'll take another look at it. We'll get a shot at it here. 56 Harvey. A little shove in the face. Yeah. It didn't look like that was much of a fracas of any kind, did it? No, but I can see why Byers would take exception to Oh, it. certainly. I didn't see what happened when he was on the ground. That was a coup. So it moves it out to the 49. First and 10. Tony on the fake reverse keeps it and goes nowhere. Lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage. Carl Wilson, number 90. One of the first ones there. You know, talking to Buddy Ryan before the game, he said, I, I, I don't think we're going to play Byers. Or I don't think we're going to play Keith Jackson. And I said, we're going to keep him out the whole game. He said, that depends. If we, <laughs> if we need him, they're going to play. And it's very obvious he thinks 
but he needs him. So Byers in there in spite of the injured back. We have not seen much of Keith Jackson except for right now. Jackson lateraling the ball to Heller and he threw it forward and the laundry's out all over the place. Heller it came up with the ball after it hit the ground, but you just can't do this. Well, here, here we see, see the rush. He throws over the top. A good block by the right tackle. And look at Jackson. Now he's coming back to the inside. And as he's falling, he tries to lateral the ball to Heller, but it was a forward pass. And as a result, not acceptable. Illegal forward pass. Number 88 offense. Also lost it down. Second down. Very uncharacteristic of the Eagles in general and of Keith Jackson in particular to make a play like that. Well, he evidently saw Heller. He didn't know who he was. He just saw somebody close by and he thought maybe we could come off with a big play and uh, it backfired because he threw it forward instead of not knowing where he was and uh, make a lateral pass. So instead of a first down, it's third down and three. At the Phoenix 44. Phoenix leading five to nothing here early in the third quarter. Good protection. Cunningham hauled down inside the 30, and Randall finally getting a chance to do his thing, gaining 18 yards. Another penalty flag down, however. Well, now we're starting to have a plethora of penalties holding indicated against the defense, the Cardinals, to go with the eight turnovers in the game. Holding number 56 defense, five yards from the end of the run, first down. So it's tacked on, and it's again Ken Harvey, the guilty party. Tony gets a good block right up the middle here, and uh, this is the great thing about Cunningham. You know, he looks and he sees the cavity on the inside and takes advantage of it very decisively. Gets as much out of the play as he possibly can. But a really excellent play on the part of Cunningham, who, you know, he does that so well anyway. On first down, completing to Keith Jackson, who's bumped out of bounds right at the 15 by Cedric Mack. Well, now they're smoking. See, they're throwing a the ball on first and 10. They're making things happen. Sometimes I think, Hank, teams say, we want to run the ball on first down. We want to do this. And it may not be the best or most effective thing for their team. Well, the worst thing about that is it's all right to try it. But if you keep banging your head against the wall, you know, and uh, nothing happens, well, you better change. You can't go through the wall. You better go over the top somehow. And that's what they're doing now. Cunningham has the protection. Jackson has the ball again inside the 10. Ball down by Eric Hill, but another flag is out. Every other play, it seems as if there's a penalty. The back judge is Al Jury, talking to referee Jerry Seaman, and he apparently the one who made the call. Again, it's a personal foul, and it's against... And it's also interference against Philadelphia. So two penalties against the Eagles on the same play. One on either side of the field. Buddy Ryan knows that the Eagles need to punch this ball in the end zone right now. Yeah, you have this kind of an opportunity. You have to get points. Pass interference. Number 88 offense. That's declined. Personal foul. Unnecessary roughness. Number 82 offense will be accepted second down. So the one that's accepted is against Mike Quick, the personal foul for unnecessary roughness. Mike Quick, whose mother came to watch him play twice. Both games he was injured. His mother no longer comes to watch him play football. Cunningham has lots of time. Wide open is Quick. He's blasted out of bounds, but he appears to have enough for the first down. Down around the eight, a gain of 23. Carl Carter knocked him out. And the great thing about the catch, it was high, but in spite of that, he knew exactly where his feet had to come down inside the line 
and it winds up being an inter a, a, a completed forward pass. And Cunningham is amazing. Starts in, goes back out, finally throws the ball. Look at this pass. See, he's close to the sideline, but he has enough presence and enough experience where he has both feet in bounds when he comes down, and it's a good completed pass. That is 61 games in a row that Mike Quick has had a reception. Fires in motion. Tony inside the five, down near the three. And the Eagles threatening with now second down and goal. And again, they said they were going to run that play. I talked to Bill Walsh, the fine line coach of the Eagles, and he was with me for 15 years at Kansas City, and one of the, I think, one of the very best line coaches in the National Football League. And he said they were going to run straight ahead, especially because the defensive ends were a little wide, and they were just going to try to run inside of him and uh, block it off inside. The eighth play of the drive for Philadelphia. Second down and goal from the three. Cunningham in the grass, fires it, complete. Chris Carter, touchdown. Anthony Bell had pressure on Cunningham, but he got it away. Well, what? I guarantee you one thing, Buddy woke him up at halftime. They looked like a totally different team. And of course, they got Byers and they got Keith Jackson, but their, their whole approach is different. They're back in business. Here again, look at him roll to the right. And he's under control. He knows exactly when to stop. Bell comes up the field. He gets a piece of him. But in spite of that, why well, he gets the ball into the end zone uh, for the touchdown. A great play again by Cunningham. So Luis Dendejas finally gets a chance to kick a ball here in his college stadium. And the Eagles, on their drive in the third quarter with 12.03 to go, have taken the lead 7-5. Well, I don't think he's under control. He's got he's got a piece of him, but I don't think he's got control of him. If he's going to have control of him, he's got to have both hands around him, and I don't think he has. He's got one around him, but I don't think he had control. He did have a piece of him, but not total control, and that's why they didn't call it, I think. Well, I'm going to disagree with you again, Hank, and I may again be wrong, but Gene Stallings certainly disagreed. You'd expect him to argue, and he has been really giving the officials an earful since that happened but he should that's the, that's he should do that and maybe they would change the decision but I don't care what he said I still think he was not in the in the grasp he didn't have total control and the officials again support your view it's a touchdown and Philadelphia leads seven to five Sikahima at the 16 to about the 30 wrapped up by Ty Allert and another penalty flag in fact a couple of them are down Around the 40 and 45. 11.54 to go in the third quarter. Holding the indication on the run back against the Cardinals. So they were going to start with pretty good field position, but they will move it back. Holding number 53 during the return. First stand. Be interesting to see how they play now defensively. Talking about Philadelphia, whether they'll come up smoking and get off that line of scrimmage like they're supposed to and like they usually do. Garth Jacks in his fourth year out of Florida State who was in an automobile accident and pretty bruised up this week called for the hold. So it moves it back to the 20. First down and 10. Nothing happening up the middle for Jordan who is knocked down right at the line of scrimmage. That answers the question I just uh, asked if just a few moments ago. They did get off the ball very well defensively. Gang tackling stopped to play at the line of scrimmage and Tupa is 0 for 5 passing on first and 10. West Hopkins leading the charge for Philadelphia so it's second down and 10 still at the 20. Tupa's first NFL start. Gary Hogeboom unable to go because of the arthritic elbow. Of course Neil Lomax completely out because of arthritic hip condition. Complete and immediately hit out of bounds is the tight end Rob Abel. Isel Jenkins. Abel came into the game with 11 catches, hadn't caught many of the last few weeks, but he's a fine receiver. And they're trying to confuse the defense of the Philadelphia Eagles by putting him in the backfield, sending him in motion, and uh, having them make a decision as to where the strength of the formation is by where the tight end goes, and that's, of course, Abel. 
Awald unable to hold on, so the incompletion brings up third down and ten. And Tom Tupa's parents, Tom Sr. and Carol, are here watching their son. They have made a number of trips to the Phoenix area, even when he did not play. But, of course, they're here because he fired as his first NFL start. And they didn't really know for sure until we all found out. And he was right at the kickoff. Looking for somebody and firing it and getting it complete to Don Holmes. Holmes doing a nice job of coming back for the ball as Reggie White and Seth Joyner were chasing Tupa. Tupa was trying to escape and again shows a lot of presence and a lot of poise. See, he's back in the shotgun. And there's the pressure. You see Brown, 99. He goes inside of the rush of the defensive end. Is looking all the time, spots the receiver downfield, hits him low, and it's a first down for the Cardinals. A great play by Tom Tupa, I think. He never saw it, as you see. J.T. Smith off and running. Deep into Philadelphia territory, dragged down by Izell Jenkins, but there is a penalty flag down on the play again. JT, the NFL's leading receiver, coming into the game, and it appears to be against Philadelphia. Holding number 95 defense, penalty decline, first down. Al Harris called for the defensive hold. He also played here at Arizona State. He's a right linebacker, 95. Let's see where there he is. Well, he's had his, he had his hands on AWOL, looks like, the tight end. But I think also the thing that made that play successful, Steve, was the fact that they won on a quick count, which you have to do if you're going to shift and create a lot of formation. 34 years old next week, J.T. Smith will be a 29-yard game. Jordan, fumble! But it looks like Phoenix will retain possession. It's going to be second down as one of the Cardinals' interior linemen fell on the ball at about the 30. And it was Luis Sharp out of UCLA who made the recovery. Luis, born in Cuba. And he's really been a terrific tackle for the Cardinals. Now in his eighth year in the NFL. Well, that allows Phoenix to retain possession of the sixth play of the drive on second and seven. Blitz. Reggie White coming strong and incomplete intended for J.T. Smith, but underthrown Eric Allen with the coverage on J.T. You know, you know, you talk about blitzing teams and why people blitz. They don't just blitz the blitz. They want to know what the blocking scheme is. And if they're going to keep the backs in and also the tight end for maximum protection, they're not going to blitz. They're going to drop off. If they're trying to get the backs out, then, of course, they're going to blitz. And they blitzed on that last play, but Tupa was able to escape well enough to get rid of the ball and not get sacked. It's 7-5. to five. Philadelphia leading with 9-17 to go in the third quarter. Third down and seven at the Philadelphia 30 to get the ball inside someplace in the middle of the way that defense is spread out. Intercepted by Seth Joyner, who steps out of bounds at the 25. And that may be the first ill-timed pass decision Tupa has made today, the fifth Cardinal turnover. And Joyner, you talk about a, a terrific linebacker, number 59, We'll see him on, the, on this particular play. Tupa rolling to his right. And here we see Joyner leaping high in front to make the interception. It was just really a badly thrown ball. He never should have thrown it. Now, there were three green shirts around two white shirts. So Seth Joyner, his eighth career interception. Eight, or rather, no, nine turnovers in the game. And the Eagles will bring it back, leaving seven to five. First and 10 at their own 25. Tony. Good pursuit by the Cardinals. Another penalty flag thrown as the tackle is made at the 26. I tell you, that, that Cardinal team is quick. 
The Eagles again called for holding. Holding number 88 offense, still first down. So it's Keith Jackson called for the penalty, moving it back to the 15. We're in Tempe, Arizona, on the campus of Arizona University, the home of the Phoenix Cardinals, Steve Zabriskie and Hank Stram. And it, the defense is dominated, but the, Phoenix, the uh, Philadelphia Eagles, Henry, have awakened a little. Yeah, I think they got out of, the, out of their sleep. Cunningham has it tipped away. Good play by Ken Harvey. He's got a hand on it. And it'll be second down and 20. Eric Hill, that middle linebacker, terrific player. And, of course, uh, Harvey also doing a terrific job, number 56. To show you that the Eagles have awakened, Hank, in the entire first half, they had 78 yards of offense. The last drive on which they scored to take the lead, they went 72 yards. Well, they'll continue to do that if they keep throwing the ball on first again to spring it around. Fires wide open between two guys, and Carl Carter hog ties him out of bounds with a penalty flag going down at the point. He may have gotten a hold of Byers' face mask on a gain of 25. And Cunningham really laid it in there nicely. Face mask. Five-yard penalty, number 41 defense, first down. So five more tacked on to the 25 on the lesser of the two face mask penalties. Looks like they caught him in a zone that time. The area was wide open. First and 10. And Byers did the rest. And, of course, that's the great thing about Byers. You know, he catches the ball, and he does such a good job of running once he does make the catch. They really missed him and Jackson in the first half, but they're both in there now. Are driving again, leading by two. Tony running off the blocks has the first down as he gets to the 40 of Phoenix. Tony really made a great move. He ran off the block of the center. It looked like Alexander, number 72, and he popped it to the left side. Now, watch your Tony now, number 25, the fullback. Watch the, watch the takeoff. Look at the big hole to the left. He sees it in a good block by the tackle. He pops into the open area and picks up a nice gain in the play, but good eyes, good vision, good balance on the part of Anthony Tony, number 25. Matt Darwin, number 78, sprung him at the line of scrimmage, and Chris Carter was down there to help him out. It's a gain of 15. Another Philadelphia first down. Cunningham again with all day. See, that's what happens when you can scramble and have the running ability of Cunningham. See, everybody thinks he's going to take off and run. He started to run, then he stopped, started to run, he stopped. Defensive backs come up, linebackers come up, and all of a sudden somebody looks like they ran right out of the bleachers. Carter, in this particular case, he's wide open for the touchdown. Well, they call him the touchdown maker, and he was waiting for one this time. Now, look at this play action pass. Look at it. He goes to his left a little bit, getting ready to throw. Whoop, goes back to the right side, makes a fake like he's going to throw the ball, stops in the hole and throws a touchdown pass downfield. And there's the receiver, Carter, and he does look like he ran right over the bleach, right out of the bleachers for the touchdown. Luis Zendeja will attempt the extra point, drills it right on through there. And the third quarter has been all Philadelphia as they've come back from a 5 to nothing deficit to lead 14 to 5. 25 yards, Chris Carter's ability to find an open area and stay with the scrambling Randall Cunningham leading to the touchdown pass. A minute 35 is all it took, and they finally, Henry, capitalized on one of the many turnovers. Yeah, that's the first time they've taken advantage of it here this afternoon. 40-yard pass. Zendejas, who lives right here in Tempe. In fact, his family owns a Mexican restaurant about a half a mile from this stadium. We'll kick it off. Yeah, 
Baker at the 10. To about the 26. Now let's take a look at Chris Carter and see how he got so open in the end zone. Carter really had him covered well, but again, this is what happens uh, with a quarterback who can move like he did. Look, at he's got him faded. Carter in good shape. Still with him in good shape. He's looking back at Cunningham, and uh, then all of a sudden he looks to his left. He sees Cunningham start to run. Carter is smart enough to go the opposite direction and is wide open in the end zone. That was really a great move on the part of Carter, Chris Carter, after the, uh, the other Carter went the wrong way. Carter on Carter. Hooper. Getting away from the pressure. Out to about the 32. Jerome Brown in hot pursuit. Finally caught up to him. So Tom Tupa in his first NFL start now having to try to bring his team back. And again, Reggie White is down for Philadelphia. And it appears to have a tender right knee. Maybe that or maybe a cramp. He might have got yeah. the cramp. Yeah, this is a great day for cramps. Cramp day here at the stadium. 100 degree temperatures. And they're as frequent as if they were being passed out. It does appear that his legs have cramped up a lot. Well, while they work on Reggie, we'll remind you that next Saturday there will be a doubleheader of college football action for you here on CBS, featuring four national powers. Number six, Tennessee, in game one, will be visiting Alabama. That'll be at noon Eastern time. And then in game two of the doubleheader, it'll be the USC Trojans and the number one fighting Irish of Notre Dame at 3.30 Eastern time. So four national powers and a big doubleheader next Saturday here on CBS Sports. One of the things that is sort of a saving grace here, Hank, is that they do not have artificial surface on this field. If they had AstroTurf or Tartan Turf, any artificial turf, it would be about twice as hot down there as it is right now. Well, while they work on Reggie, we'll take a timeout with 7.05 left to go in the third quarter. Quarter touchdowns and Philadelphia leading it. The Cardinals on second down send Farrell up the middle. And he gets a couple is all. It'll be third down and about three. Up in the press box, the former Cardinal quarterback, Neil Lomax, has now become, Hank, almost an extra assistant coach for this team. Yeah, but, you know, talking to him before the game, we talked about a little bit earlier, but talking to you know, the thing that's, that impressed me before the game, he was concerned about the fact that, you know, he thought maybe he would have a chance to play even this year, but it, that he wasn't around to help this team because of all the adverse things that have happened, and that was re really his deep concern. And that's why you saw him working out before the game. He wants to come back desperately. On third and three, it's complete to Jones. And Ernie Jones is blasted out of bounds by Eric Allen, but it is enough for a first down. And Tupa now has completed 10 of 22. Jones is anchored on the outside here. And you see Tupa look to his right to try to look off the defensive backs. And right about the time he catches the ball and starts to bring it down, he really gets a shot by Allen, but he holds on to the football, and it's a first and ten situation for the Cardinals. Ernie Jones has been the number one receiver. Tupa thrown to the ground. Mike Golick. That's the fourth Philadelphia sack of the day. Golick on the inside. They try to give those big linemen a little rest. But Golick on the inside goes around and behind almost the quarterback and gets the sack. A good play by Golick. Mike Golick, number 90. In his fourth year from Notre Dame. Reggie White back in the game. And he did have leg cramps. So it's second down and 16 following the sack of Tupa. Should be able to get the ball outside here the way the coverage is. Here comes the blitz. Sikahima picked it up. And it's complete. J.T. Smith falling forward. Maybe short of the first down. William Frizzell. Ripped him up. It depends on where they mark it, and he may have enough. He does. He had 
he had a he had a two on two situation on the slot side uh, somebody had to be open if they could pass protection uh, do a good job with the pass block look at the blitz coming on the outside and look at the block by Sikahima number 36 makes the block which provides Tupa with the opportunity to throw the ball outside to J.T. Smith J.T.'s third reception for 53 yards first and 10 at the Philadelphia 45 Winging it out to Farrell to the 40 and drop there. Gain of five. It'll be second down in five. Seth Joyner and Byron Evans bring him down. You know, we were talking to the coaches about Green, the loss of Green, and they said, well, we're naturally going to miss his talent because he's such a great player. But in conjunction with that, the problem with that is when we got Green in the ball game, we know what to expect from the defense. Now that we don't have many game, we don't know what they're going to do with the other receivers, so we got to do that kind of as we go along, and that's a ch that's kind of a problem too. And that's the first pass to a running back today. Just to emphasize that point. Jordan trying to get outside, cannot do it. Run out of bounds by Andre Waters, the strong safety. And again, if perhaps a yard to the 39. Waters is another player. You give him a chance to hit you, and he's going to hit you. Into the game now, offensively for Phoenix by Sekihima and Don Holmes. And, of course, the Eagles counter with their six defensive backs. Phoenix, four of ten on third down conversion. Two wide receivers to either side. Sikahima might be the guy they like to throw to here. No, he's in there blocking this time. Knocked down, Jerome Brown, number 99. Appeared to be the one who batted away. 333 to go in the third quarter. And Phoenix will have to give up the ball on fourth down and three. Watch Brown, number 99, on the right side of your screen. He doesn't have to step up into the pocket that time. He just steps back there and throws. That's that big old left paw up there. So, Rich Camarillo to punt, and Henry Gizmo Williams is back. It's a hanger, but it's going to be caught in the end zone. Carl Carter. A 38-yard punt. They'll move it out to the 20 on the touchback, and we'll be back with 324 to go in the third quarter. Third quarter drives resulting in touchdowns to take a 14-5 lead with 324 to go, and they have the ball back. First and 10 at their own 20. What a turnaround in the second half for Mr. Penning. You don't think uh, pep talk makes a little difference? <laughs> well, he went from three interceptions to two touchdowns to no interceptions. <laughs> I think he's getting some help from his friends, too. Oh, yeah, it makes a difference. So they all have to respond, not just one. Tony got away from Harvey in the backfield and picks up about six yards out to the 26. Harvey really was right there to make the play. Got the good depth and good penetration, but he went right around the outside. He took a bad angle. Galloway and Hill had to make the tackle. So Keith Jackson, who has been bothered by a bad back and is wearing a special pad, below his shoulder pads on his back now appears to hurt his ankle or knee and he is limping and timeout has been called and the trainers have come out to attend to it. Jackson did not play the first half. As he and Byers both have had back injuries and both have sat out. And again Buddy Ryan said I hope that we don't have to play him because he could use the rest but if we need him, they're going to have to play. And that's exactly what's happened in the second half. 41 Byers has been in the contest, and Keith Jackson has also been in the game. And talking about why coaches do certain things. You know, uh, before the game, I talked to Gene Stallings and asked who was going to start the game. And I really thought that Tupa was going to start the game, just talking to him because he hadn't made a decision yet. But I think the logic here is the fact that if he starts 
if he starts hogaboom and doesn't things don't work out real well then to put in a youngster that, that doesn't give you a whole lot of hope as far as your team is concerned conversely if you start the youngster and things don't go well then you can always put the experienced quarterback in and with the idea that he's going to help us and get us off the hook and maybe help win the game it's a more positive situation let's see if we can find out what happened to Keith Jackson who apparently injured his left knee and let's look to the right side of the screen Keith Jackson the right it tight end and he's coming down in there somebody got blocked into him yeah it looks like that's what happened looks like a Cardinal defender was blocked into his left knee by one of his own players. You know, the sad thing about that, when you have something else bothering you, sometimes you favor that, and then as a result, something else happens because you're trying to protect the original injury. Yeah, it really is. They seem to, the reason they come in bunches is because you're looking out for something. That's right. And you wind up hurting something else. Tony. No gain, maybe a yard is all. Carl Wilson, who had Tony in the end zone for the safety back in the first half for the first two points of the game, gets him again here. So it'll be third down and three as Keith Jackson is being attended to now on the sideline. His pant is up, uh, so the knee pad is up, so evidently it must be in the knee area. Well, we don't know yet whether we'll see him again. In that Pace he's going, they may not want to take the chance. Cunningham firing it and completing it to Garrity, who's bumped out of bounds. Cunningham getting away from the blitz by safety Michael Downs. Garrity on Cedric Mack, number 47. Garrity coming down. Mack is backpedaling. And you see the big cushion. Cushion meaning the room between the defensive back and the receiver. He had plenty of time to make the cut. He should have really come back at a little angle away from the de defensive back, but in spite of that, it didn't really make any difference. The ball was right on the money. He made the catch. And he was trying to get the first down, and he did. Greg Garrity in his seventh year. They call him Trash. His nickname on the team is Trash because he picks up everything. He picks up catches everywhere. He'll catch anything near him. He's just like a big vacuum sweeper. <laughs> Well, Randall Cunningham asking for time as he comes to the line of scrimmage on first and 10 at the 32. 2.08 to go in the third quarter here in Phoenix. And in Sun Devil Stadium in Tempe, it's 14 to 5, Philadelphia leading the Cardinals. The third quarter has really belonged to Cunningham and the Eagles. You know, it was interesting to talk to him yesterday, wasn't it? You're talking about uh, calling plays. I asked him about that and he said he would really like to call the plays because he understands and knows what the people can do. He did it in the preseason but Buddy Ryan took that privilege away when the season began. And so now Randall not calling anything but audible next Sunday here on CBS. It all begins at 1230 Eastern with the NFL today Tampa Bay at Washington or you might see Minnesota at Detroit Dallas at Kansas City Green Bay at Miami. And then the later games will be New Orleans at Los Angeles, New York at San Diego, and Atlanta will be here in Phoenix. It all begins at 12.30 Eastern time with the NFL Today right here on CBS next Sunday. First and 10, Philadelphia, their own 32. Cunningham looking for Giles, who catches it after the ball is tipped and goes out of bounds at the 49. Tim McDonald tipped the pass, but Giles held on for a gain of 17. I tell you, Giles, when he was playing for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, was one of the best tight ends in the league, and he's still a very, very good one. He's lost a little speed, but he hasn't lost anything else. Look at him. Watch him. The ball is tipped, but he watches it right into his hands. He knows exactly where he has to do with his feet. They're both in bounds, and he makes a big play and a big catch. Jimmy in his 13th year out of Alcorn State. In there for the injured Keith Jackson. First and 10 is a 49. Under pressure, Cunningham gets it off intended again for Giles. And it's 55. Anthony Bell was coming hard. It'll be second down and 10, and Cunningham is over the 10,000 career yard mark. You know, the one thing about Cunningham that's very interesting is the fact that, you know, he has so, such great running ability. 
that you almost have to put somebody on him just like you do a split T quarterback. And he, any time a quarterback has the option of run or pass like he has, you better assign somebody to him or else he can really create a lot of problems, which he does week after week after week. Sixth play of the drive from the 49 of Philadelphia. There goes Cunningham, but he only gets a few into Phoenix territory. Ken Harvey with a good tackle to prevent even more. That looked like a replay of what he did earlier in the game. Exactly the same thing. He ran up the middle and uh, Harvey caught him from the backside right about the same distance after he started to run right up the middle of the field. The NFL on CBS from Tempe, Arizona. Steve Zabriskie and Hank Stram as we saw the defense dominate in the first half. The Eagles have dominated the third quarter coming from a 5 nothing deficit to lead 14 to 5. Third down and seven. Cunningham lets it go. Almost picked off and then almost caught. Henry Williams almost held on after Michael Zordich the free safety had almost come up with an interception. Had he caught it, I don't think he would have been able to keep possession of it anyhow. It would have been out of bounds, I think. Let's see. It bounces up. There he gets it. Now it looks like his foot was on the mark on the sideline. It wouldn't have counted anyhow, even though he would have caught the ball. And Keith Byers appears to be injured at the Philadelphia 40-yard line. Jackson, who did not start, injured here in the third quarter. Byers, who did not start. Now apparently also injured here with a minute 10 to go in the third quarter and as with Jackson Byers has had a back injury as with Jackson this appears to be a leg injury. But here again you know as we talked earlier they wanted to rest both players but they felt they had to have him in the game and they put him in the game and now it looks like both of them get hurt. How seriously you don't know. Cunningham looked like he took a shot that may have knocked the wind out of him at the end of that play. Let's take a look at it. Cunningham, is, he looks like he's made out of rubber. I don't know how he, how he takes some of the blows, but he said yesterday that he always knows where he's falling, and he tries to fall on top of a defensive player to absorb the pressure of the hit. That time he didn't have a chance. David Galloway hit him, and Byers is leaving the field under his own steam, but obviously not 100%. He took a helmet in the back last week and that's why he didn't practice all week. You can see that heavy pad down near the bottom of the 41 on his uniform that he's wearing in an effort to protect his back. So John Telchik comes in to punt away on fourth and seventh and by Sikahima is back for the Phoenix Cardinals around the 10. No pressure on Telchik. He hangs it up high. Sikahima at the 16. Rookie linebacker from Texas after a six yard return. Sikahima, who had a 53 yarder earlier this year, and make it exciting. Sikahima, watch where he catches the ball. The, the key is you've got to catch it right at the numbers so you don't have to look down and take your eyes off the coverage people once you make the catch. But he's got terrific vision, has great ability to to take advantage of people who are moving in the opposite direction and a lot of the would-be tacklers you know they close their eyes trying to make a tackle if you keep keep your eyes open like Sikahima does well you've got a chance to make uh, a lot of big plays and that's exactly why he is such a great great return man. He looks like Roger Kingdom or somebody on that hurdle job. From the 23 first and 10 Tom Tupa stepping up and firing and completing it to Ernie Jones who holds on at the 47. Andre Waters and Eric Allen there. What a day Ernie Jones is having. A, a play action pass and the ball was thrown perfectly. Anytime you throw the ball in the middle, you better get the ball at the numbers and watch this. He makes the fake, goes back in the pocket, steps up inside of the defensive end, but watch where he throws the ball. Right at the numbers, he catches it in stride, makes the catch, puts it away. Now he has to jump for the ball or reach behind to catch the ball. It's an impossible catch. Super firing again. In and out of the hands of Jones this time. Incomplete at the Philadelphia 40. And again, Eric Allen on the coverage. Jones has caught seven balls for 117 yards. 
today and he had a big game against the Eagles last year. Well he's a terrific receiver. They like him very much and that's why with everybody's healthy these people are really a snootful because they're hard to cover if they have pass protection and they've done a pretty good job of protecting the young quarterback here this afternoon. The report is that Keith Byers was hit in the throat and that he's not serious and he will be able to return. Earl Farrell breaking a couple of tackles and dragging Wes Hopkins forward down to the 40 six or seven yard line of Phoenix time running out here in the third quarter and that is the end of the third quarter here in Phoenix with the score Philadelphia 14 and Phoenix 5 we now pause for a word from your local station downtown Phoenix they have a hard time getting people to come to this stadium they don't sell enough tickets as it is and then some of the people who buy tickets have no interest in the game unbelievable he looked a little bit like the Eagles looked in the first half. <laughs> Taking a nap. Pretty expensive place to take a nap. Buy a seat. I'll just stay home. Tupa under pressure, hammered by Jerome Brown. That's the fifth sack of Tom Tupa on the first play of the fourth quarter. Well, I tell you, Brown is really having a great year. He's a terrific player. He's making a lot of big plays. And he's got a lot more quickness. 99 over the left guard. Watch him. They block down, and nobody touches him. He gets off the ball very quickly and uh, makes the sack on the quarterback. Had no chance whatsoever because the left guard was blocking down on the inside man, and he was free. Jerome Brown once stole over 20 bases in baseball in a season. He can run. Henry Williams. Waits for it to bounce and steps out of bounds at the 11. A 40-yard punt with no return. And again, a reminder, the next Saturday, a doubleheader of college football action here on CBS. Tennessee and Alabama in game one beginning at noon Eastern time. And that'll be followed by another pair of top-ranked teams, including the number one team of the nation when USC and Notre Dame hook up in South Bend in their annual and very, very storied rivalry. That begins at 3.30 Eastern time. So doubleheader college football action next Saturday here on CBS. 14.34 to go in the game. Philadelphia with the lead, 14-5, and the ball of their own 11. King gets it outside, gets about five, and then he's knocked about five yards farther. Only these five yards aren't I Not think. in the right direction. Boy, see if we can hear the hit as we replay it for you with the natural sound. Eric Hill and Tim McDonald coming up on Mark Higgs. But the back, Tony was in the wrong position that time. He was way over the other side trying to come over. Look at that hit. Sounds good, doesn't it? Listen to that. If you don't even need to, to see it. Well, the, only, the important thing is that you're up in the press box. <laughs> you're able to hear it and see it, not feel it while we're here. Tony trying to go the other way, short of the first down, as he gets out to the 20, about two yards shy of the yard marker. It'll be third down. It was funny to watch Tony on that last formation. He was lined up way to the right. The tailback was behind the center. And he realized he should have been on the left side, so he ran like the devil to get over there to make the block. And he got there in time to help make the play. Denver has defeated Indianapolis 14 to 3. Denver defense. And the job. And they remember that shellacking they got last year when they played in Indianapolis. Philadelphia 3 of 8 on third down. And a scrambling run for a first down. Nope, I think he's going to be about a yard short. Tony needed to get across the 22, and it appears he only got to the 21, and he lost his balance yeah, before started, anybody hit him. He started the fall and lost his balance, as you mentioned, and that's why he didn't make or have a chance, really, to really fight for the extra yard. They will measure as the clock stops with 13 minutes, 38 seconds to go in the game. Buddy Ryan and the Eagles trying to retain possession, leading 14 to 5. Fourth down. Here we see Tony now coming to the left side, to the right of your screen. 
Galloway gets blocked at the inside. You see, he got, somebody got a piece of him. He's trying to fight for the extra yardage, but the balance, he loses his balance, tries to break his ball with his hand, but still can't manage to make the necessary yardage for the first down. The key was penetration that time by the Cardinal defensive front. Telchik to punt, and Sikahima back to receive. A high hanger. Beauty. Sikahima at the 39. Got a block and got out to about the 49. Ron Wolfley made the block for him. A 41-yard punt, a 10-yard return. The Eagles lead 14 to 5, and the Cardinals will have the ball when we come back. Was not exactly crisply played with the nine turnovers and the number of penalties. The big story really is the turnaround in the second half, Hank. It's a different Philadelphia Eagle team, and Randall Cunningham having two diametrically opposed halves as well, and that's why Philadelphia now leads instead of trails in this game. Well, the important thing is, you know, you must, if you're in the situation that Philadelphia's in, you must win this kind of a game. And it really important, it really, really doesn't make any difference how you look winning the game because you can always do something about the mistakes. You can't do anything about the score. And this is not over yet. But the important thing is, for Philadelphia, they have to win this game. They already know that the Giants won today. And so they need to try to keep pace in the conference, of course. So do the Cardinals. Incomplete is Tupa. Threw it behind his intended receiver, tight end Rob Awol. And this is the best starting field position so far in the, in the second half for the Cardinals. Gary Hogaboom with the arthritic elbow did not start the game. That decision was made, at least officially, right before the kickoff. Hogaboom in his 10th year. And Tom Tupa in only his second year and his first NFL start because of it. Second down and 10. Still at the Phoenix 48. Quick pass again behind Rob Awol. So well, Awol's been open twice and Tupa's missed him twice. Well, he, he, was, he was wide open and I think in his haste to get the ball to him, he didn't have his feet right. Threw the ball, falling away, and it falls incomplete and throws a poor, bat, poor pass. Here we see Tupa coming back in the pocket and he really doesn't settle and anchor his feet, get good field pos uh, feet position. As a result, throws it awry and it falls incomplete. He is only Tupa, that is, has only completed one of his last five. It's third and ten. That was intended for his favorite receiver today, Ernie Jones, but overthrown. Eric Allen was right with Jones and. Probably was a good thing it was overthrown. So fourth down and ten, and the punting unit comes on for Phoenix. I think Phoenix, uh, the next time they have the ball, just to change the pace a little bit, uh, it would be good maybe for them to go into a no-huddle offense, try to pick up the tempo and try to make something happen. And I think the other thing is if they stop uh, Philadelphia, I think they have to try to rush, rush the, the punter because Telsic hadn't, didn't get a chance to kick all week long. He might get a big play by rushing the kicker. Camarillo punts it to Henry Williams, and Gizmo jumps up and takes it at the 15. Almost came out of the pile. He got it back to about the 18, is all. And we have 12.53 left to go. Only a 32-yard punt, but just a two-yard return. Philadelphia leads it 14-5. to five. Duo Tom Tupa on the left and Gary Hogeboom, number five, on the right. Can only watch and wait now and hope that their, their defense can give them the ball back. There's plenty of time remaining. They trail by nine. Tim Rosenbach is the other quarterback. He's a rookie from Washington State whom the Cardinals picked first in the supplemental draft, but he has not had an opportunity to play at all and has taken no snaps with the first team. So that's why it fell to Tupa today. Well, I think, I really think if it continues like it is and uh, the coaching staff, Gary, uh, Gene Stallings thinks they got a chance to win the game. They'll put Hogaboom in the contest. First and 10 Philadelphia from their own 23. They lead 15 to 14 to 9. Tony spinning for a couple to the 25. And Anthony Bell on the tackle. One of the things that the Cardinals are going to have to do is do better offensively controlling the football than they've done. That was really the key to their defense giving them a five to nothing lead in the first half. In the second half, their possessions have led to an interception 
and three punts. So they really haven't been able to sustain anything. Well, the big thing, the big thing is uh, the turnover ratio. You get some turnovers, and uh, if you get a lot of turnovers in the game, why well, you see a lot of unusual things happen. Cunningham running up the middle again to the 40. Finally knocked out of bounds by the last guy who could knock him out of bounds, Tim McDonald. Chris Carter made a block that took care of two Cardinals in the secondary. Now you're the quarterback, you're Cunningham. Watch what he sees. Watch what he sees. Look at this. He's looking to his right. He sees the cavity right up the middle, and he doesn't waste any time and makes a decision. Runs down the field, breaks to his left side, runs through a would-be tackler, gets a good block downfield by one of the outside receivers. A little change of pace. He knows he's going to get hit. But he takes the ball good and he gets knocked out of bounds. A great, another great run by Cunningham. 51 yard run, the longest of his career. Tony for one or two is all. And not only is the 51 yard run by Cunningham his longest ever, it's the longest this year by an Eagle. And he already led the team in rushing again this year coming into the game. He's an athlete like the old short punt, the deep, the single wing. Thing a wing where the is a triple threat guy back there ran, you know, he punted, he plays kicks, he does everything. This look at this, a Anthony Tony getting his head twisted off. He's trying to get a little massage there, it looks like by what Tim, Jim Waller. Waller, 66. A rookie from UCLA. He looked like he tried to screw his head off. Could be made a case for a face mask penalty. Certainly part of the game, however, it is not genteel in the trenches. Well, you have to grab something, and you never know what it is sometimes, and uh, when you grab it, you twist it. <laughs> the Raiders, 20-7 to 7 over Kansas City. Incompletion makes it third down and eight, still at the 23 of Phoenix. 11-21 to go in the game. Was leading 14 to 5. Cunningham against the blitz, incomplete, intended for Giles. A little bit behind him. Michael Zordich with the coverage. Michael in his third year out of Penn State. So the field goal unit comes on on fourth down and eight. And Luis Zendejas will attempt a 40-yarder, maybe a 41-yarder. Depends on what they officially call it, as Telchik will do the holding. And he hooks it, and it's no good. The normally very accurate Luis Zendejas has now made... Seven of 11 attempts this year. He did make a 47-yarder among those, but he misses this one from just outside 40 yards. So the score remains Philadelphia 14 and Phoenix 5. Tonight on CBS, following our ball game and other activity around the NFL, 60 minutes will kick off the Sunday night lineup as usual. Followed by Murder, She Wrote with Angela Lansbury. And then the CBS Sunday night movie, The Big Easy. A romantic thriller starring Dennis Quaid and Ellen Barkin. That's tonight, right here on CBS. Phoenix, first and ten. Tupa flushed out of the pocket. Running well. And out to the 35. Byron Evans. Hauls him down, but he picks up enough for a first down. A 12-yard gain. I tell you, the coaches have to be impressed with the way Tupa's played it this afternoon under the circumstances. He, shows, he, he has shown a lot of poise, a good timing, had good feel for, for uh, pressure. And again, as I mentioned several times, I'm really surprised that he moves as well as he does. Here's a good shot now. Look, at he sees the room. He takes advantage of it right off the bat. He doesn't hesitate. He gets tackled from the backside. It's a good job on the part of Tom Tupa. Moving well again, pulling on the run and completing it. Farrell down to the 40 of Philadelphia. And the great thing about Tupa is the fact that he's aware. So he's, there's an awareness that you can't teach quarterbacks. Here he is again going back in the pocket. 
see? And he steps up into the pocket. Last time he ran. This time he's looking for somebody to throw the ball to across the field. And there he is. Farrell makes the catch and picks up a nice gain on the play. But again, the good composure on the part of Tom Tupa. We're not talking about a small guy either. Tupa is 6'4", 220. Firing and it's intercepted. An ill-advised pass that time. It was intended for Rob Awals to tie it in. And Al Harris had a better shot at it. That is the sixth turnover for the Phoenix Cardinals, just when they were driving into Philadelphia territory. It looked like it might have been a quarterback draw the way he started to run up the middle. But nothing was there. You see there's a man on the nose of the center, so that wouldn't be a good play. But watch here. See, he starts to go up when he sees the room. Then he decides to throw the ball to the outside. And I can't tell whether somebody got a piece of the ball or not. But anyway, it was intercepted. And now Philadelphia has possession first and 10. At the 44 of Philadelphia. Al Harris celebrating his second interception of the year. The clock showing 9.50 to play. Mark Higgs right at the line of scrimmage. Bulldog down by Eric Hill. Tackled by Hill. Official timeout. And an injured Cardinal down on the field at the 40. Injured Cardinals are becoming an all too common sight. It's rookie Jim Waller out of UCLA who is hurt. Coming into the game, the Cardinals had lost a total of 15 players, 11 of them starters. Watch Jim Waller now. He's lined up on the left of our screen here, number 66. Can't tell whether it's a face mask. Or what happened on the play? It looked like he was coming in late. Looks like I got kicked. But you couldn't tell for sure. They're working on his left knee. Left knees have been a very popular job for the trainers today. And, and the way they're twisting it, if it wasn't hurt before, it might be now. <laughs> <laughs> I love it when you go to the doctor and they say, does that hurt? Says, of course it hurts. I wouldn't be here if it didn't hurt. And then they get the little hammer, the rubber hammer, so <laughs> they start pounding on it, and they wonder if it hurts. <laughs> Let me have the hammer, and I'll show you. <laughs> well, Waller up, but he is not doing very well. And, boy, the training staff of the Cardinals has had a room full of guys every week this year. They have been working overtime. So Waller leaves the game, and Gene Stallings has seen this all too frequently. There was no gain on the play. So Philadelphia will go second down. Again at the 44. Carter in and out of the formation. Cunningham completing to Giles, and Giles tackled immediately by Anthony Bell. But Giles may have enough for a first down. Very sure-handed, always a good pass receiver, always a good pass route runner, and a very good blocker. Looking at the inside of the left knee. Official timeout. Jim Waller, 6'4", 270. And we talked to him, had a nice visit with him yesterday, and was impressed with his overall attitude about professional football. He said he'd like to be involved in uh, drug um, abuse centers around the country, and he start, like, would like to start in Arizona and then branch out and have them all over the country and have players all over the National Football League service those areas, which is a great ambition and uh, could become a reality in future years yeah. for Jim Wallace. He feels like there's too much negative publicity about professional athletes. Tony trying to pick his way through a hole that really wasn't there, and he gets shoved back. Anthony Bell leading the charge. You can't run that handoff kind of feeling your way. You have to blow it in there, right or wrong. you got to make the pile move, and I talked to Ted Plum. Who did so, does a, such a great job of calling plays with this Eagle offense. And he talked about some of the things they expected to do, and they've tried to do them, and some of the things they've done extremely well, and others have been somewhat of a problem. The Eagles trying to maintain possession. They have a 14-5 lead with 8-10 to go in the ballgame. It is second down and seven. 
with the ball and quickly a bunch of Cardinals there Eric Hill leading the way and a gain of about five Fox still runs with 750 and the Eagles in control Philadelphia has gained 165 yards on the ground well for those of you expecting to see 60 minutes we welcome you to CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League we're at Sun Devil Stadium here in Tempe Arizona Steve Zabriskie along with Hank Stram and the Philadelphia Eagles lead the Phoenix Cardinals 14 to 5. 60 minutes will be seen in its entirety at the conclusion of the game, except on the West Coast, where you'll see it at its regular time. Cunningham completing it to David Little, the backup tight end who's run out of bounds by Marcus Downs. And all Little does in that kind of a play, he's anchored on the left side, and he goes right out, what they call an arrow pattern, right out to the sideline, and uh, he rolls that way and throws the ball, throws in the ball very quickly on the play. You know, I talked about Ted Blum, Plum, and... Uh, he said that they were going to try to run the ball and do a good job of running, and that's exactly what they've done. You mentioned they've run for about 165 yards this afternoon, and that's what they wanted to accomplish. One of the Cardinals cheerleaders is boarding the defense on. This is the sixth play of the drive, and it goes nowhere as Tony is stopped by Rod Sadler. Sadler, you know, last year played right in. Now he's playing left in, and he looks like he's growing and developing into a very outstanding also, player. Under seven minutes to go now, and the Eagles hoping to not only maintain possession, but push the ball in the end zone as they would give themselves a little working room. However, the Cardinals still need two scores to get back in the game. catch by Jimmy Giles inside the 25 Anthony Bell was right there but Jimmy Giles with those great hands holds on Jimmy Giles just breaks out to the flat area very quickly three-step drop and he throws the ball falling away to Jimmy on the outside the linebacker I think is Bell trying to cover him he gets there in time to make the tackle but does not make the play as far as knocking the ball down is concerned. Since coming into the game in the second half, Giles, four catches for 39 yards. Mike Quick injured. He will not return to the game today. He's resting those knees. Cunningham from the shotgun. Firing it into the end zone. Carter for the touch. No, he couldn't hold on. Carter arguing vehemently, but the official says he did not have possession as Jay Taylor had the coverage, a rookie out of San Jose State. Jay Taylor, coverage is really pretty good, but he's way low, has, doesn't have a chance at all to make a play on the ball. And evidently, he didn't have possession, and he didn't have his feet inbounds, and that's why they call it incomplete. But he definitely had Jay Taylor licked on the play. So Zendejas will get another chance, this time a 42-yard attempt after missing a 41-yarder. He doesn't miss it again, and he puts it right through there with 5.47 to go in the game. Philadelphia now takes a 17-5 lead over Phoenix. Please direct your attention. Zendejas ready to kick off after making the 42-yarder. To give the Eagles a little pad here and a 12-point lead with 5.47 to go in the game by Sekihima and Tony Baker back deep to receive for the Cardinals. A nine-play, 31-yard drive culminating in the field goal. Cunningham was four of five passing on the drive and, of course, had that big, big run. I wonder if we'll see Phil McConkey maybe in the latter stages of the game. McConkey recently signed by the Cardinals. And Baker's going to run it out of the end zone. Across the 20 to about the 23. We mentioned earlier that Luis Zendejas' family has a restaurant about a half a mile from the stadium. And Luis' father put out a menu for his restaurant that has a little bit to do with the kicking game. First of all, the ball and the tee. And then look at this. Here are some items. A 25-yard field goal, a 50, and a 60-yard field goal. Or you can have the kickoff, of course. Only some of the items being offered. Well, there's a lot of people there yesterday waiting for the kickoff to take place, I guess, because the place was packed. 
which means the food has to be very good. Zendayas missed a 33 yarder earlier this year and his dad said he was going to put another item on the menu called the missed 33 yarder. But he didn't do it. But he has given the Eagles a little room. And now the Cardinals and Tom Tupa who has only completed one of his last six passes will have a first and ten. Firing long and overthrowing to the intended receiver Jay Novacek. So it'll be second down and ten. Novacek one of those guys that I guess if they had the H back offense here Hank he'd be perfect again a reminder 60 minutes coming up next except on the West Coast. Novacek sort of in between a tight end and a wide receiver and that's the kind of guy that they look for in that H back. Well that's that's what they call him a tweener because he is a, a mix between a flanker or a tight end. Second down and 10 still at the 23. Super brought it back. Under pressure completing it. Tom Guess who? Ernie Jones. To the 48 Seth Joyner and Andre Waters knock him down. But another big day and another big game for Ernie Jones. They'll go without the huddle at the 49 after a gain of 26. Just over five minutes to play. Incomplete. It was intended for Don Holmes, who couldn't hold on. And this is a good move for them to go to the no huddle offense. They've got plenty of time left. Uh, but they want to try to make something happen and it's just more apt to happen with this kind of an offense than it would be if they stayed with their conventional stuff and took a lot of time. That's the third ball that's been dropped by a receiver today. That Tupa has thrown. You know talking to Tupa yesterday he's very nonchalant very calm and I wondered at the time what it would be like today in the huddle and he looks like he's exactly the same yeah, way. He does. It's, it's same he, pace. We were impressed with his poise yesterday and we've been impressed with his poise today. It was actually Friday I guess. Here he gets a little chance to lose his poise. Well he didn't. Uh, <laughs> Jerome Brown and Reggie White brought him down. Yeah he didn't have much help that time from the offensive line. But Philadelphia offside. So the sack will be erased, and Jerry Seaman Outside, will get the call. Lining up in the neutral zone, number 99, Dave Finn, still second down. So Jerome Brown got a little head start. He was lined up in the neutral zone, which is the an area as wide as the football is long. And the penalty moves the ball into Eagles territory at the 46, where it'll be second down and five. Four wideouts on every play, six DPs for Philadelphia. Complete to Sikahima. Sikahima inside the 30 before he's run out of bounds by Seth Joyner. 4.32 on the clock and a gain of 17. Sikahima can really fly. You get him the football and he really flew down that sideline. Picked up a lot of yardage on the play. Sekahima in his fourth year at a Brigham Young University is a news reporter, sports reporter for the local CBS affiliate station here in Phoenix. So he's preparing for his career after football already. Keep getting more competition all the time, Steve, don't we? <laughs> Reminiscent of last week's game against Washington where the Cardinals came back strong to lose by two. Did JT hold on? No, he did not. The ball is not a completed pass. As JT Smith dove for it, clock stopping with 4.27 remaining in the game. Tupa getting the plays from the sideline. You know, we talked to Jeff Fisher yesterday who works with the defense, and um, he's really the defensive coordinator. And we talked about the fact that, you know, how would they play differently in the event that Tupa played or Gary Hogaboom? He said, it really won't make any difference. And we'll play the kind of a game we anticipated playing and we'll make any adjustments we need to make as we go along. And that's exactly what they've done. They adjusted well in the second half. Tupa wide open. Middle incomplete. Jay Novacek wide open at the five yard line. Somebody had to blow the coverage. Something had to happen. He was wide open on the play. 
And here you see Tupa throwing the ball right down the middle, right about the time he gets rid of the ball, he gets a shot. It looked like he should have caught that ball. He had a chance to catch that. Personal foul, roughing the passer, blow to the head, number 99, defense. First down. Well, Tupa's been really under pressure, and you'd expect that from the great Philadelphia front four. This time, they hit him in the head, however, and the referees are really watching that closely. Tupa's been sacked four times, pressured 12, knocked down eight times, had two balls batted, and four picked off. So the pressure's been there by the Philadelphia defense. That time, however, they picked up a big penalty that moves it inside the 15. You talked about, you know, one thing, he doesn't have nervous feet. He hangs in there good. Whoa. Got the pressure that time. Jerome Brown and William Frizzell. Frizzell coming from the left on the safety blitz. Buddy Ryan calls him lefty after one of Buddy's favorite country and western singers. going without the huddle. 4-10 to play. Tupa fires his team complete over the head of Vi Sikahima. And the clock now stopping with 4.06 left. Well, you were, wonder why Brown is putting so much pressure on the quarterback. He's playing against a young rookie, Mike Sandusky. And, uh, you know, that's quite a responsibility for a youngster who is starting uh, for the first time. Not today, but, of course, but starting as a rookie. There's Sandowski. Sandowski, a rookie from the University of Washington at 6'2 and 280. 285. When Phoenix got to the 14, that was their deepest penetration of the day offensively, but they're now back on the 24 after the sack. Tupa just does get it away, and it's almost picked off. Tipped by Seth Joyner, and again, it was intended for Jay Novacek. Tupa took a shot again. And, of course, the defense loves it when they know you're going to throw, throw, throw. There's not much indecision on the part of what they're going to do. And they put those ears back and really fly in there. Did you see the chart on his wrist? He has a cuff on his left wrist with the plays written on it. It's a laundry list. Yeah, it's a little cheat sheet there. There it is. Just above and over the, the uh, sweatband. And he's got plays written on that to help him when they're called because of his inexperience. Fourth down. Again under pressure. Picked off. William Frizzell coming the other way. Out to the 32. Louise Sharp and Lance Smith make the tackle. A 28-yard interception return as the Eagles try to put it away. Brazil came into the game with two interceptions. Now he's got three. Number 33. Looks like they're just playing a zone, dropping back, looking at the ball. Look at him jump in front of the deep, uh, the receiver. Brazil, number 33. And watch the hit. Watch the hit. Pitts. Pitts really gives him a shot right about the time he got rid of the football. Number 74. Mike Pitts. And that's one interception Tupa was spared having to watch as William Frizzell picked it off and brought it back 28 yards. Frizzell's third interception of the, of the year and the seventh Phoenix turnover of the day. And a Philadelphia Eagle was shaken up. Andre Waters way back across the field, now walking off, was shaken up. A reminder again that 60 minutes will be up next, except on the West Coast, where you will see it at its regular time. And the rest of the lineup tonight, following 60 minutes, of course, Murder, She Wrote, and then the CBS Sunday night movie, The Big Easy, starring Dennis Quaid and Ellen Barkin. All tonight, next here on CBS. Time to go home. As loyal Phoenix fans stayed for the drive down the field, but with Philadelphia in control and 3.51 left on the clock, they're leaving. Mark Higgs banging forward across the 35. Higgs playing in place of Keith Byers. 17 to 5. Philadelphia and Buddy Ryan having known going into the game that the New York Giants won 
they had to win this game to keep pace. Well, sometimes, you know, when you when you know the score before you start to play your game, there's a little bit of a letdown because you're pulling for the Giants, you know, to lose, and then you find out that they win. And I think sometimes subconsciously there's a little letdown and uh, that you don't realize exists. But Buddy and his staff did a great job of making adjustments and the little squeaking at halftime to get him back in the form that they should have played to begin with. Higgs again on second down and six picks up a couple. And of course, right away, timeout called by the Cardinals to preserve what time they can since they did not allow the first down. You know, as far as Gene Stallings and the Cardinals are concerned, Hank, they, in losing this game, they really do drop out of the big picture as far as the NFC East is concerned. And uh, with the leading team, the Giants winning, they'll fall another game back. But in this division, the Eastern Division of Conference, it really is far from decided because Washington, in spite of the loss, is not out of it. Philadelphia is certainly still in it if they hold on here and win, and they're leading by 12. And, of course, the Giants, in spite of the fact that they lost that game to Philadelphia last week, able to bounce back in their, you know, the next biggest game. It seems like every week there's a next bigger game. Well, the only thing is, uh, Steve, really, after six games, you cannot say that anybody is out of the race. They might be have a hard road to, to hold from here on in, but you never know what's going to happen. I never forget Paul Brown one year lost the first six games and won the next eight and wound up in the playoffs. And so anything can happen, and that's the selling job that Gene Stallings and his coaching staff to have, has to prevail on his squad uh, from here on in. Cunningham dragged down from behind by Dave Galloway, who's played a heck of a game. That is the first sack of Cunningham today. Galloway really playing the defensive right end, and he's another player that's played a variety of positions, but uh, I don't think anybody got a block on him. And if you don't block him, he's quick and he's strong and uh, fast and got a good shot on Cunningham. Uh, apparently, nobody thought to call timeout, and the Cardinals let time run off the clock. And Zendejas on the sideline with his 42-yarder that has given Philadelphia more of a pass. We were talking about the NFC East. Let's take a look at the standings. Now, the Giants winning today, 5-1 five, five and one now after losing last week to Philadelphia. The Eagles winning here today. They would be 4-2. and two. Washington's lost there at 500, and Phoenix losing would drop to 2-4. and four. Of course, Dallas still struggling to win a game. And that is the way it stands. Should this game remain as it is, with Philadelphia leading 17-5, to five, with two minutes and 40 seconds left to play. Yeah, it's hot. Especially on that sideline. So you have no shade over there. And especially when you wear the dark jersey. That's right. And that's that why makes Phoenix, a big difference. That's right. That's why Phoenix insists not only the shaded side, but in wearing white at home. They wear the white mesh jerseys at home always because of the heat. Well, Bill McConkie is in as a deep punt returner. Bill McConkie signed us last week. And Telchik punts a beauty. McConkie back inside the 15. Good move as he gets across the 25 to the 26. So the former New York Giants return man. Wasn't McConkie, back 13. wasn't McConkie excited when we talked to him yesterday? He came in about the time we did, and uh, he could hardly wait to put the uniform on. Uh, he was watching the game last week on television, and uh, he said he was very, very impressed just watching this team play because he thought they had a lot of character, and it showed through the screen. He said he ran out to, to work out, and while he went out to work out, while his wife went out to do some shopping while they were gone, why uh, the Cardinals called him and left a note on the answering machine and said they wanted him to come to St. Louis. And he got here before he even talked to anybody personally about coming to the press. Eric Allen picks off Tom Tupas' pass. And the Cardinals' last very faint hope just went out the window. You know, and that's a, a great job by Allen, and uh, Tommy Bettis works for the defensive backs, and he was with us for those great years in Kansas City when we went to the Super Bowls. But he, too, is one of the great defensive people in the business and uh, had a nice visit with him, and he was very impressed with the young defensive backs that he has.
So with just 2.23 left on the clock, and the scores of other games still underway, and those that are completed. Philadelphia now will just have to run it out to preserve their 17 to 5 victory. Higgs cutting it up nicely and getting across the 40. Higgs carries for a good game. Ken Harvey makes the tackle, and Phoenix calls timeout with 2.13 to play. You know, Phoenix in the second half had seven possessions, four turnovers, three punts. Complete reversal of what happened in the first half. Well, you know, you were talking about two halves of a season, Hank. Uh, you can't write anybody off after six games. And I think that's indicative of, of a game. I mean, a season is like a game. That's you're, why you're you right. play a full 60 minutes. That's why you play a full 16-game schedule. And that's why you play four quarters. <laughs> <laughs> well, Cunningham back on. Here's the scoring summary, and for a while there wasn't any. Tony got tackled by Carl Wilson in the end zone for a safety, and that was two to nothing Phoenix. And then Del Greco added a 41-yard field goal, and Phoenix led five to nothing. That was the halftime score. And all of that scoring, that abundance of seven points came in the second quarter. Then in the third quarter, we talked about what Buddy Ryan might be saying to his troops, and certainly he must have said something, and they got the message even if he didn't. They came out with two drives, and Carter with the TD receptions from Cunningham, one of three and one of 40 yards, and Philadelphia turned it around to lead 14 to five. Then Zendejas here in the fourth quarter, after missing a 41-yarder, made a 42-yard field goal to make it 17 to five Philadelphia. 2.13 to go in the game. Not really a stellar day for Randall Cunningham, but certainly a much stronger second half. Higgs again, and he can't get away. Good play by Tim McDonald, the strong safety who was up quickly. You know, the way those two safeties play for, for the uh, Phoenix Cardinals, they're very aggressive, and I was surprised they didn't get more passes up on top of the safeties during the course of this game from play action. Two-minute warning. We'll be right back with Philadelphia in control. Massive beef is Randall Cunningham, who today completed 16 of 29 passes, 193 yards. The two third-quarter touchdown passes that are the difference in the game for Philadelphia. He did throw three interceptions. And there have been a ton of turnovers in this game. Two minutes to go, and Cunningham to throw. And throwing long flag on the play. The pass intended for Henry Williams and Carl Carter, and Williams were battling inside the five. A reminder, 60 minutes follows the game here on CBS, except on the West Coast. Pass interference, number 41 defense, first down. You know, the question now arises, why would you throw the ball deep and try to get another touchdown when you got the game won? Very simply, you know, those players, they're, they're only concerned about doing their job and doing what they have to do and get as many points on the scoreboard as they possibly can. They're not going to let up, regardless what the score is, and that was the reason for throwing that deep pass. Well, Buddy Ryan and Tom Landry had a little feud going when Landry was coaching the Cowboys over the running up or the perceived running up of the score. That is a, what amounts to a 40-yard penalty as it's first and goal on the three-yard line for Philadelphia. Now they're not going to score. They're going to lay an egg. Yeah, and Cunningham just lays down as the clock runs with a minute 48 left to play. And that's Buddy Ryan right there. He doesn't want to make it look like he's pouring it on his friend, Gene Stallings. So in this particular case, I'm sure that they won't try to score. Seems kind of ironic, though, that they go and throw the long right. pass. They'll take that if they can get it. But now that they're down there, Buddy pulls in his horn. Yep. But Buddy didn't call the play, so that makes a difference, too. Well, they're going to run all the 30-second clock they can. The game clock showing now 1.15 to go. 30-second clock down to 7. And Cunningham again will go to one knee. One minute exactly left to play in the game. Now the Eagles and the Cardinals will turn their attention to the weeks ahead and with much 
different things on their mind. Right? Some way the Cardinals have got to get some people helping. They're not going to have anybody left to play. And again, Cunningham to one knee, and that should do it. As usual, Randall Cunningham, the offensive story for Philadelphia with 265 of their 355 total yards in this game. Cunningham with 193 passing and 72 rushing and the two third quarter touchdown passes that brought Philadelphia back to win the game. The final 17 to 5. I want to mention Buddy, Buddy Ryan did a good job at halftime and that's what the good coaches do. You don't think it's an emotional game. You saw what happened after his pep talk at halftime and the way they played in the second half and won this football game for the Eagles. And that's the final. Philadelphia 17, Phoenix 5.